in the quiet realm of ancient Greece, where gods walked among mortals and heroes were born from the breath of legends, there existed a tale that stirred the hearts of men and gods alike, a tale that would echo through centuries, known to all as the Trojan War. It began with a beauty that rivaled the dawn itself. Helen, daughter of Zeus and the mortal Queen Leda, possessed a radiance that could halt armies in their tracks. Her face was said to launch a thousand ships, but it was her fate to ignite a conflict that would reshape the fates of nations. Paris, a prince of Troy, was the unwitting catalyst. Imagine Paris, young and brave, yet filled with an ache in his heart. The gods, capricious as ever, tasked him with judging the fairest among Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite. Each offered a bribe, power, wisdom, or love. Paris, entranced by Aphrodite's promise of the most beautiful woman in the world, bestowed upon her the golden apple of discord. Little did he know, this decision would unfurl the tapestry of war. Helen, already wedded to Menelaus, king of Sparta, found herself stolen away from her home by Paris's enchanting smile. The breach of hospitality and the sacred bond of marriage ignited the fury of the Greeks. Menelaus, wounded in pride and love, called upon his brother Agamemnon, the mighty king of Mycenae and leader of men, to assemble a force unparalleled in history. The gathering storm of war rumbled across the Aegean. It was not merely mortals who answered the call, gods and goddesses, too, took sides. Hera, nursing a grudge against Troy, whispered promises of victory in Agamemnon's ear. Athena, goddess of wisdom and war, sharpened the wits of Odysseus and Diomedes. Even Zeus, king of the gods, struggled with his desires and obligations, torn between divine impartiality and paternal love. As the ships of the Greek armada sailed towards Troy, the heavens wept tears of ambivalence. On the beaches of the Troad, the armies clashed in a ballet of bronze and blood. Achilles, the son of Thetis and Peleus, emerged as the Greeks' greatest champion, a hero whose name would resound through eternity. His wrath was as fierce as the sea in storm, his skill unmatched upon the battlefield. Yet, his heart harbored a vulnerability, a vulnerability tied to his beloved companion Patroclus. Hector, eldest son of King Priam and Queen Hecuba, stood as Troy's bulwark against the encroaching Greeks. His courage was matched only by his love for his city and his family. His duel with Achilles, beneath the walls of Troy, remains etched in memory, an epic clash of titans that bespoke both the glory and tragedy of mortal existence. Amidst the clash of bronze and the cry of the dying, the gods toyed with the fates of men. Apollo guided Paris's arrow to strike Achilles in his heel, the lone vulnerability gifted by his mother's hands. Athena deceived Hector into facing Achilles alone, sealing his doom. The divine machinations wove through the fabric of war, influencing outcomes and sealing the destinies of mortals. Yet, amidst the carnage, there arose moments of humanity and compassion. Priam, old and weary, ventured into the Greek camp to beg for the body of his fallen son Hector. Achilles, moved by the old king's grief and courage, granted his request, offering a momentary truce in the blood-soaked saga of war. In the tenth year of the conflict, a ruse was conceived, the Trojan horse, a gift that concealed a deadly payload. Odysseus, master of guile, and the Greek warriors hid within the belly of the wooden behemoth. As Troy celebrated its presumed victory, the Greeks emerged from their concealment in the dead of night. The city burned, its walls breached, and its people slaughtered or enslaved. The once proud kingdom of Priam fell, crumbling beneath the weight of prophecy and betrayal. The aftermath was a tapestry woven in shades of grief and triumph. Helen, returned to Menelaus, bore witness to the destruction wrought by her beauty. Agamemnon, victorious yet cursed by hubris, met his fate at the hands of his wife Clytemnestra. And Achilles, despite his glory, succumbed to the hand of Paris and the poison of Apollo. The echoes of the Trojan War resonated through the annals of history and myth. It became a cautionary tale of pride and desire, of the capriciousness of gods and the frailty of mortals. The heroes and heroines who fought and fell upon the plains of Troy became immortalized in song and story, a testament to the enduring power of myth and the indomitable spirit of humanity. 
In the age when gods roamed the heavens and mortal hearts beat with passions as fierce as the sea, there existed a tale of love, betrayal, and heroic deeds that stirred the very fabric of existence. This is the story of the Trojan War, a saga woven with threads of divine intervention and mortal folly, where the destinies of gods and men intertwined upon the plains of Troy. At the heart of this epic were figures whose names echoed through the corridors of time, each playing a pivotal role in the unfolding drama. Zeus, the king of gods and thunder, wielded his power with a majesty that rivaled the heavens themselves. His decisions shaped the fates of nations, yet even the ruler of Olympus was not immune to the whims of desire and intrigue. Hera, his queen and sister, possessed a jealousy as fierce as her beauty. Protector of marriage and family, she watched over mortal unions with a keen eye, often meddling in affairs to ensure her will prevail. It was Hera's wrath that sparked the initial discord leading to the judgment of Paris, a pivotal moment that set the wheels of war in motion. Paris, son of King Priam and Queen Hecuba of Troy, was a prince whose fate was entwined with that of his city. Handsome and charismatic, he was chosen by the gods to decide which of three goddesses was the fairest. His choice of Aphrodite, goddess of love, would prove disastrous, for it led to the abduction of Helen, the woman whose beauty was renowned throughout the ancient world. Helen, daughter of Zeus and Leda, was the mortal woman whose face launched a thousand ships. Her beauty was not merely skin deep, it was a force of nature that drew men to her like moths to a flame. Married to Menelaus, king of Sparta, Helen found herself torn between duty and desire when Paris, entranced by her radiance, whisked her away to Troy. Menelaus, husband of Helen and brother of Agamemnon, was a king whose honor was tarnished by Paris's audacious act. His love for Helen was matched only by his pride, wounded grievously by her abduction. It was his cry for justice that spurred the Greek armies to action, to sail across the wine-dark sea in pursuit of vengeance and restoration of honor. Agamemnon, brother of Menelaus and king of the powerful city of Mycenae, was the leader of the Greek expedition against Troy. Ambitious and ruthless, he saw in the Trojan War an opportunity to expand his dominion and assert his authority over the Aegean world. His command united the disparate Greek city-states under a common cause to retrieve Helen and punish the Trojans for their perceived transgression. Achilles, son of the sea nymph Thetis and the mortal hero Peleus, emerged as the mightiest warrior among the Greeks. His name was synonymous with prowess and invincibility, yet his heart was burdened by the prophecy of his inevitable death in battle. Achilles fought not merely for glory, but for a legacy that would endure beyond his mortal days. Hector, eldest son of King Priam and Queen Hecuba, stood as Troy's greatest defender, a hero whose courage and loyalty were matched only by his love for his family and city. His clash with Achilles outside the walls of Troy epitomized the tragedy and heroism of mortal conflict, where duty and destiny collided in a torrent of blood and sorrow. Priam, wise and venerable king of Troy, bore the weight of leadership with a grace born of decades upon the throne. His kingdom, once prosperous and proud, now faced its greatest challenge, a siege that threatened to unravel the very fabric of Trojan civilization. Priam's decision to face Achilles and beg for the return of Hector's body humanized the conflict, revealing the depths of paternal love and grief amidst the chaos of war. Each of these figures, Zeus and Hera, Paris and Helen, Menelaus and Agamemnon, Achilles and Hector, Priam and many others were not mere players upon the stage of history. They were embodiments of divine will and mortal frailty, their passions and decisions shaping the course of a conflict that would resonate through the ages. The Trojan War was more than a clash of armies, it was a crucible in which the virtues and vices of humanity were forged. It tested the limits of love and loyalty, honor and hubris, and the fragile balance between mortal ambition and divine intervention. Their stories, filled with triumph and tragedy, continue to echo in the annals of myth and memory, a testament to the enduring power of storytelling and the timeless truths found within the hearts of all who dare to dream and to love. In the golden age, when gods walked the earth and mortal hearts beat with passions as fierce as the roaring seas, there bloomed a tale that etched itself into the annals of history, a tale of love, betrayal, and the clash of empires known as the Trojan War. 
It all began with a golden apple, plucked from the very gardens of the Hesperides and inscribed with the words to the fairest. This apple, a gift from the goddess Eris, ignited a spark of discord among the Olympian deities. For who among them could claim the title of the fairest? Hera, queen of the gods, with her regal bearing and fierce pride. Athena, wise and warlike, whose brilliance outshone the stars. Or Aphrodite, goddess of love and beauty, whose enchanting allure could melt even the coldest heart. The decision fell to a mortal, Paris of Troy, a prince destined for greatness yet plagued by the uncertainties of fate. The gods, always capricious, chose him to settle their dispute. Each goddess offered Paris a bribe, power, wisdom, or the love of the most beautiful woman in the world. Paris, swayed by Aphrodite's promise of love, awarded her the apple, unwittingly sealing the doom of his city and igniting the flames of war. For Helen, daughter of Zeus and the mortal queen Leda, was already bound in matrimony to Menelaus, king of Sparta. Her beauty was famed far and wide, her face a vision that launched ships and kindled desires. When Paris, overcome by desire and Aphrodite's divine influence, set eyes upon Helen, his heart was ensnared. In secret, he spirited her away from Sparta, leaving behind a grieving husband whose honor and love were now besmirched. The abduction of Helen was a wound that cut deep into the heart of Greece. Menelaus, robbed of his queen and his pride, called upon his brother Agamemnon, mighty king of Mycenae, to assemble a host unparalleled in its wrath and resolve. From across the Aegean, they rallied their allies, warriors and kings, drawn by duty, honor, and the bonds of kinship. Thus, the Greek fleet assembled, its sails billowing with the winds of vengeance and retribution. Yet, amidst the clamor of war drums and the clash of bronze, there were fleeting moments of diplomacy and hope. Envoys were dispatched to Troy, bearing olive branches and offers of peace. Men of wisdom and eloquence pleaded for the return of Helen, seeking to avert the cataclysm of war that loomed on the horizon. But the die was cast, and the gods, ever meddling in the affairs of mortals, whispered in the ears of kings and warriors. King Priam of Troy, wise and venerable, sought to appease the Greeks, offering reparations and solemn oaths of conciliation. Yet, the wounds of pride and honor ran deep on both sides. Agamemnon, driven by ambition and the desire for glory, spurned Priam's offers, demanding justice for the wrongs done to his brother. The diplomatic efforts faltered, crushed beneath the weight of ancient grievances and divine machinations. And so, the die was cast, and the stage was set for a conflict that would echo through the halls of eternity. The Greek armada, with its thousand ships, sailed across the wine-dark sea, driven by the inexorable tide of destiny. On the shores of Troy, the clash of empires unfolded, a spectacle of heroes and gods, where the lines between myth and history blurred and mortal men dared to challenge the will of the heavens. In the shadow of Mount Ida, where the gods once held court and mortal dreams brushed against the fabric of eternity, the warriors of Greece and Troy clashed in a ballet of bronze and blood. Achilles, invincible and wrathful, led the charge, his name a thunderclap that reverberated across the battlefield. Hector, eldest son of King Priam, stood as Troy's shield and sword, his courage a beacon of hope amidst the storm of war. But amid the chaos and carnage, there emerged moments of humanity and compassion. Priam, gray-bearded and weary, ventured into the Greek camp under the cover of night, his heart heavy with grief for his beloved city and fallen sons. Achilles, moved by the old king's bravery and humility, granted him mercy and returned the body of Hector, slain in battle but forever immortalized in the annals of heroism. The causes of the war, rooted in the caprice of gods and the frailty of mortals, became intertwined with the destinies of those who fought and fell upon the plains of Troy. It was a conflict not merely of armies, but of ideals and principles, of honor and pride, love and betrayal. The judgment of Paris, the abduction of Helen, and the failed attempts at diplomacy became the crucible in which the virtues and vices of humanity were tested, their stories etched into the very fabric of myth and memory. And so, the Trojan War raged on, its flames fueled by the passions and ambitions of gods and men alike. It was a tale that would be told and retold through the ages, a testament to the enduring power of storytelling and the timeless truths found within the hearts of all who dare to dream and to love. 
In the distant mists of time, when the world was young and the gods still walked among mortals, there brewed a storm that would shake the foundations of empires and echo through the annals of history, the tale of the events leading to the Trojan War. It began with a wedding, a joyous occasion where gods and mortals mingled in celebration. Peleus, a mortal hero of unmatched courage, wedded Thetis, a sea nymph whose beauty and grace rivaled that of the goddesses themselves. All Olympus rejoiced except for one, Eris, goddess of discord, whose heart simmered with jealousy and resentment. To sow discord among the divine company, Eris cast forth a golden apple inscribed with the words to the fairest. Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite, each claiming the title, sought the judgment of Paris, prince of Troy. Each goddess offered a bribe, power, wisdom, or love. Paris, swayed by Aphrodite's promise of the most beautiful woman in the world, awarded her the apple. Little did he know, this choice would set in motion the wheels of destiny and tragedy. Aphrodite's promise was not idle. Helen, daughter of Zeus and Leda, was the woman whose beauty launched a thousand ships. Her marriage to Menelaus, king of Sparta, should have ensured peace and prosperity. But fate had other plans. Paris, driven by desire and Aphrodite's enchantment, spirited Helen away to Troy, a deed that would forever alter the course of history. For Menelaus, husband and king, Helen's abduction was a dagger plunged into the heart of his honor and love. His cries for justice reached the ears of his brother, Agamemnon, mighty king of Mycenae and commander of men. Agamemnon saw in Helen's abduction an opportunity to assert Greek dominance over the Aegean world, to punish Troy for its audacity, and to reclaim what was rightfully theirs. The call for war resonated across the Greek lands, stirring the hearts of kings and heroes alike. From the rugged shores of Ithaca to the storied halls of Athens, warriors gathered, their hearts aflame with righteous fury and the promise of glory. Achilles, son of Thetis and Peleus, emerged as the mightiest among them, his name a beacon of hope and terror upon the battlefield. Yet, amidst the clamor of war drums and the clash of bronze, there were moments of hesitation and doubt. Embassies were dispatched to Troy, bearing olive branches and offers of reconciliation. Priam, wise king of Troy, sought to appease the Greeks, offering reparations and solemn oaths of peace. But the wounds of pride and honor ran deep on both sides, exacerbated by the divine machinations of Zeus and Hera, Athena, and Apollo. Diplomacy faltered in the face of ancient grievances and mortal ambition. The gods, ever meddling in the affairs of men, whispered in the ears of kings and warriors, stoking the flames of war. Hera, nursing a grudge against Troy, fueled Agamemnon's resolve. Athena, goddess of wisdom and war, sharpened the wits of Odysseus and Diomedes. Even Zeus, king of the gods, struggled with conflicting desires, torn between divine impartiality and paternal love. And so, the die was cast, and the Greek armada set sail across the wine-dark sea, a thousand ships bound for the shores of Troy, their sails billowing with the winds of vengeance and retribution. On the horizon, the walls of Troy stood proud and defiant, its fate entwined with that of its prince, Paris, and its defenders, led by Hector, eldest son of Priam. Hector, brave and steadfast, stood as Troy's shield and sword. His courage was matched only by his love for his family and his city. Yet, amidst the clash of bronze and the cry of the dying, he harbored doubts and fears. For he knew that the fate of Troy lay heavy upon his shoulders, and that the coming storm would test not only his strength, but the very foundations of his beliefs and loyalties. As the Greek forces landed on the shores of the Troad, the stage was set for a conflict that would resonate through the ages, a clash of empires fueled by love and ambition, pride and honor, divine will and moral frailty. The events leading to the war were not merely a series of skirmishes and sieges, but a tapestry woven with threads of passion and tragedy, heroism and sacrifice. The judgment of Paris, Helen's abduction, and the failed attempts at diplomacy became the crucible in which the virtues and vices of humanity were tested, their stories etched into the very fabric of myth and memory. It was a tale of gods and mortals, of love and betrayal, of empires rising and falling beneath the gaze of Olympus. And as the armies clashed beneath the walls of Troy, the world held its breath, knowing that the outcome would shape the destiny of nations and the course of history forevermore. 
In the twilight of a summer's eve, when the gods cast their gaze upon the mortal realm with a mixture of curiosity and caprice, a singular event unfolded, a tale of beauty and betrayal that would resonate through the ages. This is the story of Helen's abduction and the Greek response, a saga of love, pride, and the clash of empires that ignited the flames of the Trojan War. Helen, daughter of Zeus and the mortal queen Leda, possessed a beauty that could stir the hearts of gods and mortals alike. Her face was said to rival the dawn itself, her presence a beacon of grace and allure. Married to Menelaus, king of Sparta, her union should have been a pillar of stability and happiness in the tumultuous world of ancient Greece. Yet fate had other plans. It was at a banquet, held in honor of the gods, where the seeds of discord were sown. Eris, goddess of discord, harbored resentment towards her divine siblings and sought to sow chaos among them. To this end, she cast forth a golden apple inscribed with the words to the fairest, knowing full well the chaos it would unleash. Hera, queen of the gods, Athena, goddess of wisdom and war, and Aphrodite, goddess of love and beauty, each laid claim to the golden apple, each believing herself deserving of the title. Their rivalry turned to Paris, prince of Troy, as the arbiter of their dispute. Each goddess offered a bribe, power, wisdom, or the love of the most beautiful woman in the world. Paris, young and impressionable, found himself torn between the promises of divine power and the allure of mortal beauty. In the end, it was Aphrodite's promise of love that swayed him, the promise of Helen, whose beauty was renowned throughout the known world. Unbeknownst to Paris, this decision would set in motion a series of events that would shape the destiny of nations. For Helen, the consequences were dire. On a fateful day, as she wandered the gardens of her palace in Sparta, a shimmering figure approached, a figure whose charm and grace masked the treachery within. Paris, emboldened by Aphrodite's promise and driven by desire, convinced Helen to leave behind her husband and her home, to sail with him to Troy. The abduction of Helen sent shockwaves through the halls of Sparta and beyond. Menelaus, husband and king, returned to find his palace empty, his queen vanished like a wisp of smoke on the wind. His heart, torn between grief and rage, cried out for justice. The honor of his house had been besmirched, his pride trampled beneath the feet of betrayal. Word of Helen's abduction spread swiftly across the Greek lands, carried by the winds of rumor and the tongues of travelers. Kings and warriors, their hearts aflame with righteous fury and the call of honor, rallied to Menelaus' side. Among them stood Agamemnon, brother to Menelaus and king of the powerful city of Mycenae. Ambitious and ruthless, Agamemnon saw in Helen's abduction an opportunity, a chance to assert Greek dominance over the Aegean world, to punish Troy for its audacity, and to reclaim what was rightfully theirs. The call to arms resonated across the Greek lands, stirring the hearts of men and the councils of kings. From the rugged shores of Ithaca to the storied halls of Athens, warriors gathered, their swords sharpened and their hearts steeled for battle. The Greek fleet assembled, a formidable armada of a thousand ships, their sails billowing with the winds of vengeance and retribution. In Sparta, Menelaus mourned the loss of his beloved queen, his heart heavy with sorrow and longing. Memories of Helen haunted his dreams, her laughter echoing through the empty halls of his palace. He knew not whether she had left of her own accord or had been taken against her will. But one thing was certain, his love for Helen burned brighter than the fires of war, a beacon of hope amidst the storm of conflict. As the Greek armada set sail across the wine-dark sea, the fate of empires hung in the balance. On the shores of Troy, the city of Priam stood proud and defiant, its walls bristling with spears and its gates barred against the coming storm. Within its walls, Paris and his kin prepared for the inevitable clash, their hearts heavy with the knowledge of what was to come. For Helen, ensconced within the golden walls of Troy, the reality of her situation began to dawn. Her beauty, once a source of pride and admiration, had become a curse, a catalyst for war and destruction. She knew not whether she was a pawn in the gods' game or a victim of her own desires. But one thing was clear, her presence in Troy had sparked a conflict that would consume the lives of countless men, shatter the peace of nations, and forever alter the course of history. The abduction of Helen and the Greek response were not merely events of political intrigue and military strategy. They were a testament to the power of love and desire, 
pride and honor, and the fragile balance between divine will and moral frailty. There were a saga of heroes and heroines, kings and queens, whose choices and actions shaped the destiny of nations and the course of human civilization. As the Greek forces landed on the shores of the Troad, the stage was set for a conflict that would resonate through the ages, a clash of empires fueled by love and ambition, pride and honor, divine will and mortal frailty. The world held its breath, knowing that the outcome would shape the destiny of nations and the course of history forevermore. In the golden age of heroes and gods, when the echoes of Olympus reached across the mortal realm, there unfolded a chapter of the Trojan War marked not by swords and spears, but by words, diplomatic negotiations, and the futile attempts at reconciliation. This was a time when the fate of nations hung in the balance, when pride clashed with reason, and when the gods themselves played their part in the unfolding tragedy. It began with a betrayal of hospitality, a betrayal that rippled through the halls of Sparta and beyond. Menelaus, king of Sparta, returned home from a journey to find his palace empty, his queen Helen vanished like a fleeting dream. His heart, torn between grief and rage, demanded justice. The honor of his house had been besmirched, his pride trampled beneath the feet of betrayal. News of Helen's abduction spread like wildfire across the Greek lands, carried by the tongues of travelers and the whispers of gods. Menelaus, in his anguish, called upon his brother Agamemnon, mighty king of Mycenae, to assemble a coalition of Greek kings and warriors. They gathered under the banner of justice and revenge, their resolve unyielding, their hearts aflame with righteous fury. Yet amidst the clamor of war drums and the clash of bronze, there were voices of reason and diplomacy. Envoys were dispatched to Troy, bearing olive branches and offers of peace. Men of wisdom and eloquence sought to avert the impending cataclysm, to find a resolution that would spare the lives of countless men and preserve the fragile peace of the Aegean world. King Priam of Troy, wise and venerable, received the Greek envoys with courtesy and grace. He offered reparations and solemn oaths of conciliation, seeking to appease the wrath of Menelaus and Agamemnon. Yet the wounds of pride and honor ran deep on both sides, exacerbated by the meddling of the gods who watched from their lofty perch on Olympus. Hera, queen of the gods, nursed a grudge against Troy, fueling Agamemnon's ambition and resolve. Athena, goddess of wisdom and war, sharpened the wits of Odysseus and Diomedes, urging them to reject Priam's overtures. Even Zeus, king of the gods, struggled with conflicting desires, torn between divine impartiality and paternal love. The diplomatic negotiations faltered amidst the weight of ancient grievances and mortal ambition. Each side sought justice and vindication, yet neither was willing to yield. The gods, ever meddling in the affairs of men, whispered in the ears of kings and warriors, stoking the flames of war and driving them inexorably towards conflict. And so, the die was cast, and the stage was set for a war that would shake the foundations of empires and shape the destiny of nations. The Greek armada, with its thousand ships, set sail across the wine-dark sea, a formidable force driven by the inexorable tide of destiny. On the shores of Troy, the city of Priam stood proud and defiant, its fate entwined with that of its prince, Paris, and its defenders, led by Hector, eldest son of the king. Yet amidst the looming specter of war, there were fleeting moments of humanity and compassion. Priam, gray-bearded and weary, ventured into the Greek camp under cover of night, his heart heavy with grief for his beloved city and fallen sons. Achilles, moved by the old king's bravery and humility, granted him mercy and returned the body of Hector, slain in battle but forever immortalized in the annals of heroism. The failed attempts at reconciliation were not merely a series of diplomatic maneuvers and political intrigue. They were a testament to the power of pride and honor, love and betrayal, and the fragile balance between divine will and moral frailty. They were a saga of heroes and heroines, kings and queens, whose choices and actions shaped the destiny of nations and the course of human civilization. As the Greek forces landed on the shores of the Troad, the stage was set for a conflict that would resonate through the ages, a clash of empires fueled by love and ambition, pride and honor, divine will and mortal frailty. The world held its breath, knowing that the outcome would shape the destiny of nations and the course of history forevermore. 
In the time of legends, when gods and mortals walked the earth in uneasy harmony, there arose a conflict that would shake the foundations of empires and echo through the annals of history, the Trojan War. At its heart were the Greek leaders, each driven by passions as fierce as the roaring seas, their motivations shaping the destiny of nations and the course of human civilization. Chief among them was Agamemnon, mighty king of Mycenae and brother to Menelaus, king of Sparta. A figure of towering ambition and unyielding pride, Agamemnon saw in Helen's abduction not just a personal affront, but an opportunity to assert Greek dominance over the Aegean world. His role as leader of the Greek expedition was not merely born of duty, but of a burning desire for power and glory that surpassed all others. From the halls of Mycenae to the shores of Troy, Agamemnon's name struck fear and reverence. His armies gathered like storm clouds, their spears gleaming in the sun, their hearts steeled for battle. Yet behind his facade of regal authority lay a man tormented by the burdens of leadership and the sacrifices demanded by destiny. For Agamemnon, the war was a crucible in which his ambition clashed with the responsibilities of kingship. His decisions were not always guided by wisdom or compassion, but by the ruthless calculus of power and dominance. His clashes with Achilles, the greatest of the Greek warriors, exemplified the complexities of leadership amidst the chaos of war. Achilles, son of the sea nymph Thetis and the mortal hero Peleus, was a figure of mythic proportions, a warrior whose wrath could topple cities and whose valor knew no equal. His motivations, however, were as tumultuous as the sea itself. Achilles fought not merely for glory or honor, but for a legacy that would transcend mortal life, a legacy that would immortalize his name in the annals of heroism. But Achilles' wrath was not born solely from ambition or pride. It was fueled by betrayal and injustice, inflicted upon him by Agamemnon himself. When Agamemnon claimed Achilles' prized maiden, Briseis, as his own spoil of war, the warrior's rage burned hotter than the fires of Hades. He withdrew from the battlefield, his absence leaving a void in the Greek ranks, a void that threatened to unravel the very fabric of their campaign. The rift between Agamemnon and Achilles was more than a clash of egos. It was a conflict between duty and personal honor, between the obligations of leadership and the demands of individual freedom. Achilles' refusal to fight was not just a strategic setback, but a poignant reminder of the fragile alliances that bound the Greek coalition together. Yet amidst the turmoil of war and the clash of personalities, there were moments of profound humanity and compassion. Achilles, despite his wrath and pride, was capable of deep love and loyalty. His bond with Patroclus, his beloved companion and comrade in arms, transcended mere friendship. It was a brotherhood forged in the crucible of battle, a bond that would ultimately define Achilles' tragic fate. When news reached Achilles of Patroclus' death at the hands of Hector, prince of Troy, his grief was as thunderous as the crashing waves. The warrior who had withdrawn from battle now roared back onto the field, his armor gleaming with divine fury. His vengeance was swift and terrible, his wrath unleashing a torrent of devastation upon the Trojan ranks. The motivations of the Greek leaders, Agamemnon's thirst for power, Achilles' quest for glory, and the complex interplay of honor and pride were not merely the machinations of mortal ambition. They were reflections of timeless truths and universal themes, of love and loss, of loyalty and betrayal, of the bonds that unite us and the conflicts that tear us apart. As the war raged on, each leader faced trials that tested their resolve and challenged their beliefs. Agamemnon wrestled with the burdens of kingship and the sacrifices demanded by destiny. Achilles confronted the limits of mortal glory and the fleeting nature of fame. And through it all, the gods watched from their lofty perch on Olympus, their whims shaping the fortunes of men and the destiny of empires. The tale of the Greek leaders and their motivations was not just a story of war and conquest. It was a saga of human emotions and divine intervention, of heroes and gods whose actions echoed through the ages. It was a reminder that even amidst the chaos of conflict, there are moments of courage and compassion, of love and sacrifice, that transcend the boundaries of mortal life and echo in eternity. In the tapestry of ancient Greece, amidst the echoes of myth and the whispers of gods, there emerged a coalition of city-states, united not by bloodlines or alliances, but by a common cause that would shape the destiny of nations. 
This is the story of building the coalition of Greek city-states, a saga of courage and camaraderie, of unity forged in the fires of war. The call to arms reverberated across the sun-drenched hills and olive groves of Hellas, carried on the winds of destiny and the fervent prayers of kings and warriors alike. At its heart was Menelaus, king of Sparta, whose heartache and righteous fury echoed through the land. His queen, Helen, the fairest of maidens, had been snatched from his side, a betrayal that struck at the very core of his honor and pride. Menelaus turned to his brother Agamemnon, mighty king of Mycenae and lord of a realm that stretched from the rugged shores of the Peloponnese to the distant lands of Asia Minor. Agamemnon, a figure of regal authority and unyielding ambition, saw in Helen's abduction not just a personal affront, but an opportunity to unite the Greek city-states under a banner of justice and vengeance. From the rocky heights of Corinth to the marble streets of Athens, messengers were dispatched bearing Agamemnon's call to arms. Leaders of city-states, each with their own aspirations and grievances, heeded the summons, drawn by promises of glory, honor, and the spoils of war. Nestor, wise king of Pylos, brought his counsel and decades of experience. Ajax, the towering bulwark of Salamis, brought his strength and unwavering loyalty. Diomedes, fearless prince of Argos, brought his martial prowess and unquenchable thirst for battle. Yet the path to unity was fraught with challenges and discord. Each city-state bore its own grievances and rivalries, its own ambitions and fears. The prospect of war with Troy, a city famed for its towering walls and storied defenses, seemed daunting and perilous. Diplomats and emissaries crisscrossed the Greek lands, their words weaving a tapestry of alliances and promises, a fragile web that could unravel at any moment. But amidst the chaos and uncertainty, there were moments of solidarity and shared purpose that transcended the petty rivalries of men. Achilles, the greatest of the Greek warriors, heeded the call to arms, not for the promises of wealth or glory, but for the bonds of brotherhood and honor. His presence alone was enough to inspire hope and courage among the assembled host, his name a beacon of strength and resilience. Together, the Greek city-states formed a coalition unlike any seen before, a tapestry woven with threads of valor and sacrifice, of unity forged in the crucible of war. Each leader brought their own strengths and weaknesses, their own dreams and doubts, to the campaign against Troy. They stood shoulder to shoulder, their swords raised in defiance of fate and the whims of the gods. The journey across the wine-dark sea was fraught with peril and uncertainty. The Greek fleet, with its thousand ships, sailed under the gaze of the gods, Zeus, Hera, Athena, and Apollo, whose whims and desires shaped the fortunes of mortals. Storms raged and tempests threatened to swallow the fragile vessels whole, yet the resolve of the Greek warriors remained unshaken. As they landed on the shores of the Troad, the true test of their unity and resolve awaited. Troy, with its impregnable walls and fierce defenders, stood as a testament to human ingenuity and determination. Yet the Greeks, fueled by the bonds of brotherhood and the promise of justice, laid siege to the city, a siege that would test their courage and endurance to the limits. The coalition of Greek city-states was more than just an alliance of convenience, it was a testament to the power of unity and collective action in the face of adversity. It was a reminder that even amidst the chaos of war and the clash of empires, there are moments of heroism and sacrifice that define the course of history. As the war dragged on, each city-state faced trials that tested their resolve and challenged their beliefs. Agamemnon wrestled with the burdens of leadership and the sacrifices demanded by destiny. Achilles confronted the limits of mortal glory and the fleeting nature of fame. And through it all, the gods watched from their lofty perch on Olympus, their whims and desires shaping the fortunes of men and the destiny of empires. The tale of building the coalition of Greek city-states was not just a story of war and conquest. It was a saga of human emotions and divine intervention, of heroes and gods whose actions echoed through the ages. It was a reminder that even amidst the chaos of conflict, there are moments of courage and compassion, of love and sacrifice, that transcend the boundaries of mortal life and echo in eternity. In the fading light of a Greek summer's eve, the horizon blazed with the fiery glow of a thousand torches, their flickering flames dancing like spirits across the waves. 
This was the departure for Troy, a moment etched in the annals of history, where the fate of nations hung in the balance and the hearts of warriors beat as one. The Greek fleet lay anchored in the sheltered coves and harbors of Aulis, a sprawling armada of a thousand ships, each bearing the hopes and dreams of men bound for war. From the rugged shores of Ithaca to the sun-drenched cliffs of Crete, they had gathered under the banner of Agamemnon, mighty king of Mycenae, and Menelaus, a grieved king of Sparta. The ships, fashioned from sturdy timbers hewn from ancient forests, creaked and groaned under the weight of their cargo, warriors clad in bronze and leather, their hearts steeled for battle. They came from every corner of Hellas, drawn by the call to arms that echoed across the Aegean like the clarion call of Zeus himself. Among them stood Achilles, the greatest of the Greek warriors, his armor gleaming in the fading light. His presence alone was enough to inspire awe and fear among his comrades in arms, his name whispered with reverence and awe. Yet beneath his stoic facade lay a heart burdened by the weight of destiny and the shadow of prophecy. At his side stood Patroclus, his beloved companion and comrade in arms, whose loyalty and courage matched that of his illustrious friend. Together, they had sailed from the shores of Thyia, their bond forged in the crucible of battle and the shared trials of war. For Achilles, Patroclus was more than a friend, he was a brother, a kindred spirit whose fate was intertwined with his own. As the fleet prepared to set sail, the air was thick with anticipation and apprehension. Warriors offered prayers to the gods, Athena, goddess of wisdom and war, Poseidon, god of the seas, and Apollo, god of prophecy, seeking their favor and protection in the trials ahead. Sacrifices were made, libations poured, and omens scrutinized for signs of divine approval or disfavor. The logistics of preparing such a massive expedition were daunting, yet the Greeks were driven by a singular purpose, the retrieval of Helen, queen of Sparta, whose beauty had sparked a conflict that threatened to consume the known world. Supplies were loaded onto the ships, sacks of grain and dried meats, barrels of wine and water, and weapons forged by the finest craftsmen in all of Hellas. Leaders of city-states conferred with one another, their voices rising and falling in heated debate over strategy and tactics. Nestor, wise king of Pylos, offered counsel born of decades of experience and the wisdom of age. Odysseus, cunning king of Ithaca, devised schemes and stratagems to outweak the Trojan defenders. Ajax, the towering bulwark of Salamis, stood sentinel over the assembled host, his gaze unwavering and his loyalty unyielding. And amidst the tumult and preparations, there were moments of quiet reflection and introspection. Achilles, gazing out across the wine-dark sea, pondered the fateful journey that lay ahead. His heart was torn between duty and desire, between the call of glory and the bonds of brotherhood. Yet deep within his soul, he knew that his path had been chosen, not by mortal hands, but by the whims of fate and the caprice of the gods. As the last rays of sunlight faded into the embrace of night, the Greek fleet set sail from Aulis, a sight that would be remembered for generations to come. The waters churned and foamed beneath the prow of each ship, their sails billowing with the winds of destiny and the hopes of men. The stars above bore witness to their journey, their twinkling lights a guide through the treacherous waters of the Aegean. On the shores of Troy, the city of Priam stood proud and defiant, its walls bristling with spears and its gates barred against the coming storm. Within its walls, Paris, Prince of Troy, and his kin prepared for the inevitable clash, their hearts heavy with the knowledge of what was to come. They knew that the Greek fleet, with its formidable armada and renowned warriors, posed a threat unlike any they had faced before. Yet amidst the looming specter of war, there were fleeting moments of humanity and compassion. Hector, eldest son of Priam and champion of Troy, sought to protect his city and its people from the ravages of conflict. His love for his wife Andromache and their infant son Astyanax was a testament to the bonds that bound him to his homeland, even in the face of overwhelming odds. As the Greek fleet sailed ever closer to Troy, the true test of their courage and resolve awaited. The journey had only just begun, yet the echoes of their departure resonated across the ages, a testament to the power of unity and determination in the face of adversity. The fate of nations hung in the balance, their destinies intertwined by the threads of fate and the caprice of the gods. The tale of the departure for Troy was not just a story of war and conquest. 
It was a saga of human emotions and divine intervention of heroes and gods whose actions echoed through the ages. It was a reminder that even amidst the chaos of conflict, there are moments of courage and compassion, of love and sacrifice that transcend the boundaries of mortal life and echo in eternity. In the pantheon of heroes whose names echo through the ages, there is none more renowned than Achilles, the mightiest of the Greek warriors who fought in the shadow of Troy. His story is not just one of valor and prowess in battle, but of passion and tragedy that transcends the mortal realm. From the moment of his birth, Achilles was destined for greatness. Born of Thetis, a sea nymph of unrivaled beauty, and Peleus, a mortal hero of renowned valor, he was gifted with strength and courage beyond measure. Yet his fate was also marked by prophecy, a foretelling that he would achieve immortal glory in battle, but at the cost of a short and fiery life. As a youth, Achilles was trained in the arts of war by the centaur Chiron, whose wisdom and guidance shaped the young hero into a paragon of martial skill. His prowess with spear and shield was unmatched, his speed and agility likened to that of the gods themselves. But it was not just his physical prowess that set Achilles apart, it was his indomitable spirit and unyielding resolve in the face of adversity. When Agamemnon called upon the Greek city-states to assemble a coalition against Troy, Achilles heeded the call, not out of duty or obligation, but out of a desire for glory and renown. His presence alone was enough to inspire awe and fear among his comrades in arms, his name whispered with reverence and admiration. For Achilles, the war was not just a chance to prove his valor, it was an opportunity to forge a legacy that would echo through the ages. Yet Achilles' role in the Greek forces was not without its complexities and conflicts. His relationship with Agamemnon, commander of the expedition, was fraught with tension and discord from the outset. When Agamemnon claimed Achilles' prized maiden, Briseis, as his own spoil of war, the warrior's wrath was ignited like the flames of Hades. His withdrawal from the battlefield was not just a strategic setback for the Greek forces, it was a poignant reminder of the fragile alliances that bound the coalition together. Achilles' rage burned hotter than the fires of Olympus, his heart torn between duty to his comrades and the demands of personal honor. For him, the loss of Briseis was not just a matter of pride, it was a betrayal that struck at the very core of his being. In his absence, the Greek forces suffered setbacks and losses that threatened to unravel the fabric of their campaign. Hector, prince of Troy and champion of its defenders, seized the opportunity to press the advantage against the beleaguered Greeks. His skill in battle and tactical acumen posed a formidable challenge to the Greek commanders, whose unity and resolve were tested to the limits. But Achilles' absence from the battlefield was not destined to last. When news reached him of Patroclus' death at the hands of Hector, his grief was as thunderous as the crashing waves. The warrior who had withdrawn from battle now roared back onto the field, his armor gleaming with divine fury. His vengeance was swift and terrible, his wrath unleashing a torrent of devastation upon the Trojan ranks. In the heat of battle, Achilles' prowess was unmatched. He cleaved through the Trojan lines like a force of nature, his spear and sword striking down foes with effortless grace. Hector, despite his skill and valor, could not withstand the fury of Achilles' onslaught. Their duel was a clash of titans, a testament to the power of destiny and the caprice of the gods. When Achilles finally slew Hector, his victory was bittersweet. The prince of Troy, noble and brave to the last, had earned his respect and admiration. Yet Achilles' triumph was overshadowed by the knowledge that his own fate was inexorably tied to the prophecy that foretold his early demise. His moment of glory was tempered by the specter of mortality that haunted him like a shadow. In the aftermath of Hector's death, Achilles faced a choice that would define his legacy. He could return to Thaya, his homeland, and live out his days in peace and obscurity. Or he could remain in the crucible of war, where glory and renown awaited him on the blood-stained fields of Troy. Ultimately, Achilles chose the path of honor and duty. He continued to fight alongside his fellow Greeks, his name a rallying cry for courage and resilience. His presence on the battlefield was a source of inspiration and strength, his deeds immortalized in the songs and stories of poets and bards. But Achilles' fate was sealed long before the walls of Troy fell. In a moment of tragic irony, he was struck down by an arrow, fired by Paris, 
guided by Apollo, that found the one vulnerable spot in his invincible armor. His death marked the end of an era, a testament to the fleeting nature of mortal glory and the inevitability of fate. The tale of Achilles and his pivotal role in the Greek forces is not just a story of war and conquest. It is a saga of human emotions and divine intervention, of heroes and gods whose actions echo through the ages. It is a reminder that even amidst the chaos of conflict, there are moments of courage and compassion, of love and sacrifice, that transcend the boundaries of mortal life and echo in eternity. In the hallowed annals of ancient Greece, amidst the clash of swords and the thunder of gods, there exists a tale of wrath and its haunting consequences, the saga of Achilles, whose fury shook the very foundations of empires and reverberated through the corridors of time. At the heart of this epic is a hero unlike any other, born of divine lineage and mortal flesh. Achilles, son of the sea nymph Thetis and the mortal hero Peleus, was destined for greatness from the moment of his birth. His name resonated with power and promise, whispered with reverence among both gods and men. Yet greatness came at a cost, a cost measured not in gold or glory, but in the tumultuous passions that stirred within his heart. Achilles was not just a warrior of unmatched skill and valor, he was a man of fierce pride and unyielding honor, whose wrath could ignite like the flames of Mount Olympus itself. The spark that ignited his wrath was kindled in the fires of injustice and betrayal. When Agamemnon, leader of the Greek expedition against Troy, claimed Achilles' prized maiden, Briseis, as his own spoil of war, the hero's fury knew no bounds. It was a betrayal that cut deeper than any blade, a wound that pierced his soul with the searing pain of betrayal. In his rage, Achilles withdrew from the battlefield, a decision that sent shockwaves through the Greek ranks and emboldened their Trojan adversaries. The consequences of his absence were swift and devastating. Without their greatest champion, the Greek forces faltered and fell before the relentless onslaught of Hector, Prince of Troy, and his warriors. The wrath of Achilles was not merely a personal vendetta, it was a cataclysmic force that threatened to unravel the very fabric of the Greek expedition. His absence was felt like a void in the heart of their campaign, a void that threatened to consume them in the darkness of defeat. But it was not only the Greeks who suffered from Achilles' wrath. The hero himself was tormented by the consequences of his actions, haunted by the specter of mortality and the weight of his own destiny. His grief was as palpable as the salt-laden winds that swept across the plains of Troy, his heart heavy with the burden of responsibility and regret. In his darkest moments, Achilles found solace in the arms of his beloved companion, Patroclus. Their bond was forged in the crucible of battle and tempered by the trials of war. Patroclus, whose loyalty and courage matched that of his illustrious friend, stood by Achilles' side through triumph and tragedy alike. When news reached Achilles of Patroclus' death at the hands of Hector, his grief was as thunderous as the crashing waves. The warrior who had withdrawn from battle now roared back onto the field, his armor gleaming with divine fury. His vengeance was swift and terrible, his wrath unleashing a torrent of devastation upon the Trojan ranks. In the heat of battle, Achilles' prowess was unmatched. He cleaved through the Trojan lines like a force of nature, his spear and sword striking down foes with effortless grace. Hector, despite his skill and valor, could not withstand the fury of Achilles' onslaught. Their duel was a clash of titans, a testament to the power of destiny and the caprice of the gods. When Achilles finally slew Hector, his victory was bittersweet. The prince of Troy, noble and brave to the last, had earned his respect and admiration. Yet Achilles' triumph was overshadowed by the knowledge that his own fate was inexorably tied to the prophecy that foretold his early demise. His moment of glory was tempered by the specter of mortality that haunted him like a shadow. In the aftermath of Hector's death, Achilles faced a choice that would define his legacy. He could return to Thaya, his homeland, and live out his days in peace and obscurity. Or he could remain in the crucible of war, where glory and renown awaited him on the blood-stained fields of Troy. Ultimately, Achilles chose the path of honor and duty. He continued to fight alongside his fellow Greeks, his name a rallying cry for courage and resilience. His presence on the battlefield was a source of inspiration and strength, his deeds immortalized in the songs and stories of poets and bards. But Achilles' fate was sealed long before the walls of Troy fell.
In a moment of tragic irony, he was struck down by an arrow, fired by Paris, guided by Apollo, that found the one vulnerable spot in his invincible armor. His death marked the end of an era, a testament to the fleeting nature of mortal glory and the inevitability of fate. The wrath of Achilles and its consequences is not just a tale of war and conquest. It is a saga of human emotions and divine intervention, of heroes and gods whose actions echo through the ages. It is a reminder that even amidst the chaos of conflict, there are moments of courage and compassion, of love and sacrifice, that transcend the boundaries of mortal life and echo in eternity. In the heart of every great conflict lies a tapestry woven not just by mortal hands, but by the whims and wills of the divine, a realm where gods and goddesses stride amidst mortals, shaping destinies with capricious hands and hearts as tumultuous as the storm-tossed seas. This is the influence of the gods on the battlefield, where their presence is felt in every clash of sword and shield, and every cry of triumph and lament of loss. From the towering heights of Mount Olympus, where Zeus reigns supreme with thunderbolts clenched in his mighty fists, to the deepest depths where Poseidon stirs the currents of the sea with his trident, the gods of ancient Greece hold sway over the fortunes of men. Their favor is a boon that grants strength and courage, while their wrath is a tempest that lays waste to armies and empires alike. At the onset of the Trojan War, it was the divine discord that set the stage for mortal conflict. Eris, goddess of strife, cast a golden apple among the assembled gods at the wedding of Peleus and Thetis, a simple act that ignited a blaze of jealousy and rivalry among Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite. Each claimed the apple for herself, and in their rivalry, they sought the judgment of Paris, Prince of Troy. Paris, swayed by the promise of love and beauty, awarded the apple to Aphrodite, who had promised him the love of the most beautiful mortal woman, Helen, Queen of Sparta. Thus began a chain of events that would lead to war, as Menelaus, a grieved husband of Helen, called upon his brother Agamemnon and the Greek city-states to reclaim his bride and restore honor to his house. The gods, ever watchful and ever meddling, took sides in the conflict. Hera, queen of the gods and protector of marriage, favored the Greeks, while Aphrodite, goddess of love and beauty, shielded the Trojans. Athena, goddess of wisdom and warfare, lent her aid to the Greeks, guiding their heroes with cunning and strategy. Yet it was not just through favor or intervention that the gods influenced the course of battle. They wove themselves into the very fabric of mortal lives, shaping destinies with the subtlety of a master weaver. When Hector, prince of Troy and champion of its defenders, faced Achilles in single combat, it was Apollo who guided his hand, shielding him from the wrath of the invincible hero until fate decreed otherwise. In the heat of battle, the gods intervened with both benevolence and cruelty. They granted strength and valor to their favorite champions, while sowing discord and confusion among their adversaries. When Achilles, consumed by grief and rage over the death of Patroclus, laid waste to the Trojan ranks, it was Athena who whispered in his ear, urging him on to ever greater feats of destruction. But the influence of the gods was not always a boon to their mortal pawns. Their rivalries and squabbles mirrored those of men, their conflicting agendas often leading to suffering and tragedy. When Zeus weighed the fates of mortals on his golden scales, it was with a detachment born of immortality, a reminder that even the gods themselves were subject to the inexorable laws of destiny. In the face of such divine machinations, mortals struggled to find their own agency and purpose. They prayed for favor and protection, offering sacrifices and libations to appease the capricious gods. Yet their prayers were often met with silence or indifference, as the gods played their games with hearts as cold and distant as the stars. Amidst the chaos of battle, there were moments of grace and compassion that transcended the boundaries of mortal and divine. When Hector, facing the wrath of Achilles, sought to bid farewell to his beloved wife Andromache and their infant son Astyanax, it was a scene of heartbreaking tenderness, a reminder that even in the midst of war, there existed moments of humanity and love. In the end, the influence of the gods on the battlefield was a testament to the fragile balance between mortal ambition and divine will. Their presence was a force that shaped destinies and determined the outcomes of wars, their favor a prize coveted by kings and heroes alike. 
Yet amidst the tumult of their conflicts, there remained a glimmer of hope that in the hearts of men, courage and compassion could still triumph over the whims of gods and the ravages of war. Thus, the influence of the gods on the battlefield is not just a tale of divine intervention and mortal struggle. It is a saga of human emotions and aspirations, of heroes and villains whose actions echo through the ages. It is a reminder that even in the face of overwhelming odds and capricious gods, there exists a spark of humanity that refuses to be extinguished, a spark that shines brightest in the darkest hours of history's greatest conflicts. In the ancient city of Troy, amidst the shimmering walls that rose like a bastion against the Aegean winds, there lived a people whose tales of courage and tragedy have echoed through millennia. At the heart of this storied city stood its leaders, figures of nobility and strength whose destinies were bound to the fortunes of their beloved homeland. Foremost among them was Priam, the aged king whose reign spanned decades of prosperity and strife. His face bore the weight of wisdom and sorrow in equal measure, lines etched by years of rule and the burdens of leadership. Priam was not just a king, he was a father to his people, a guardian of Troy's traditions and hopes. Under Priam's guidance, Troy flourished as a beacon of culture and civilization, its walls adorned with the riches of a city blessed by the gods. But amidst the splendor and opulence, there lurked shadows of uncertainty, a city besieged by the ambitions of its neighbors and the looming specter of prophetic doom. At Priam's side stood his noble son, Hector, prince of Troy and its greatest champion. Hector was the embodiment of valor and honor, his prowess in battle matched only by his compassion for his people. He was not just a warrior, he was a leader whose courage inspired both awe and reverence among his fellow Trojans. Hector's love for his family was as boundless as the sea that kissed Troy's shores. His wife, Andromache, was his heart's anchor, a woman of grace and fortitude, whose beauty was matched only by her devotion to her husband and their infant son, Astyanax. Their love was a beacon of hope amidst the tumult of war, a reminder that even in times of strife, there existed moments of tenderness and warmth. Andromache's days were spent in quiet anticipation and fear as she awaited news of Hector's return from the battlefield. Her heart was a fragile vessel, filled with prayers for his safety and yearning for his embrace. When Hector departed for battle, her eyes followed him with a mixture of pride and trepidation, knowing the dangers that awaited him beyond the city's protective walls. Yet despite the looming threat of Greek aggression, Troy's leaders sought to maintain a semblance of diplomacy and peace. Priam, wise and venerable, engaged in negotiations and alliances with neighboring kingdoms, striving to preserve Troy's sovereignty and protect its people from the ravages of war. His words were a balm to weary hearts, a testament to his commitment to peace even in the face of looming conflict. But peace was a fleeting dream amidst the clash of empires and the ambitions of kings. When Paris, Priam's wayward son, sparked the flames of war by abducting Helen, queen of Sparta, the die was cast. Troy's fate was sealed in the blood-soaked sands of its battlefield, where heroes and gods clashed in a struggle for supremacy and survival. Hector, burdened with the weight of his responsibilities, stood as Troy's stalwart defender, a shield against the encroaching storm of Greek aggression. His leadership was a beacon of hope to his comrades, his voice a clarion call to arms in defense of their beloved city. But for all his valor and skill, Hector could not stem the tide of war that threatened to engulf Troy in its relentless grasp. As the conflict raged on, Andromache's fears grew with each passing day. Her prayers were whispered to the heavens, seeking solace and protection for Hector amidst the chaos of battle. Her days were spent in quiet contemplation and preparation as she cared for young Astyanax, a symbol of innocence amidst the brutality of war. When news reached Andromache of Hector's fateful duel with Achilles, her heart shattered like a fragile vase. The realization that she may never again feel his touch, hear his laughter, or share his dreams filled her with a grief as deep as the ocean's abyss. Her tears flowed like rivers, carrying with them the weight of a love lost and a future shattered. In the aftermath of Hector's death, Troy's leaders faced an uncertain future. Priam, stoic in the face of tragedy, sought to rally his people and bolster their defenses against the Greek onslaught. His words were a beacon of strength and resilience, a reminder that even in the darkest hours, Troy's spirit could not be extinguished. Yet the gods, ever fickle and unpredictable, 
cast their shadows over Troy's fate. Athena, goddess of wisdom and warfare, guided the Greek heroes with cunning and strategy, sowing discord and confusion among their Trojan adversaries. Apollo, god of prophecy and healing, lent his aid to Hector in battle, until fate decreed otherwise. The influence of the gods on the battlefield was a testament to their power and caprice, a reminder that mortal destinies were woven with threads of divine intervention and mortal folly alike. Their presence was felt in every clash of sword and shield, and every cry of triumph and lament of loss. But amidst the chaos and carnage, there remained moments of grace and compassion that transcended the boundaries of mortal and divine. Priam's courage in the face of adversity, Hector's valor on the field of battle, and Dramache's unwavering love and sacrifice, all were testament to the enduring strength of the human spirit. In the end, Troy's leaders and society stood as a testament to the power of love, honor, and resilience in the face of overwhelming odds. Their tale is not just a story of ancient history, but a saga of human emotions and aspirations that resonate across time and space, a reminder that even in the shadow of war, there exists a light that refuses to be extinguished. In the heart of ancient Troy, where the winds carried whispers of impending war and the city walls stood as a testament to human ingenuity and resilience, the defenses and strategies of this storied city were crafted with a blend of cunning and courage that defied the encroaching shadows of doom. Imagine standing atop the towering battlements of Troy, gazing out across the fertile plains that stretched towards the horizon. The city itself, with its labyrinthine streets and bustling markets, was a testament to the prosperity and ingenuity of its people. But beyond the veil of normalcy lay a reality sharpened by the looming threat of Greek invasion, a threat that would test the mettle of Troy's defenders to its very core. At the helm of Troy's defenses stood its noble prince, Hector, a beacon of courage and leadership amidst the gathering storm. His strategies were not just born of tactical brilliance, but of a deep-seated determination to protect his beloved city and its people from the ravages of war. Each decision he made, each maneuver he orchestrated, was a testament to his unwavering commitment to defend Troy's walls against all odds. The city's fortifications were a marvel of ancient engineering, their stone walls rising like cliffs against the tide. Towering battlements overlooked every approach, manned by brave warriors whose vigilance never wavered. Behind these formidable defenses, the people of Troy lived and labored, their lives intertwined with the fate of their besieged city. Yet it was not just physical barriers that shielded Troy from its enemies. The Trojan warriors, under Hector's command, employed tactics that spoke to their resilience and adaptability. They were masters of guerrilla warfare, striking with precision and retreating with agility, a strategy that frustrated their Greek adversaries and bought precious time for their city's survival. As the Greek forces, led by Agamemnon and bolstered by the wrath of Achilles, laid siege to Troy's walls, the defenders faced a relentless onslaught that tested their resolve to its limits. The clash of bronze and iron echoed through the city streets, mingling with the cries of warriors and the lamentations of those left behind. But amidst the chaos and carnage, Troy's defenders found strength in their unity and determination. They fought not just for themselves, but for their families, their homes, and their way of life. Each arrow loosed from the city walls, each blow struck in defense of their loved ones, carried with it a resolve that could not be broken. Hector, standing tall amidst the din of battle, epitomized the spirit of Troy's defense. His shield, adorned with the image of a roaring lion, struck fear into the hearts of his foes. His spear, wielded with the skill of a master, found its mark time and again, driving back the Greek forces with a ferocity born of love and duty. But for all their courage and resilience, Troy's defenders could not stave off the inexorable tide of war forever. The Greek siege engines pounded relentlessly against the city walls, their battering rams a testament to the determination of Agamemnon's forces to breach Troy's defenses. Inside the city, the people of Troy prepared for the worst. Women and children sought shelter in underground chambers, their prayers rising to the heavens like incense. Elders offered counsel and wisdom to the younger generations, passing down tales of courage and sacrifice that had sustained their city through countless trials. Yet amidst the despair and uncertainty, there remained moments of hope and defiance. 
Priam, aged yet unbowed, stood with his people in their darkest hour, his voice a beacon of strength and resilience. Andromache, her heart heavy with fear for Hector's safety, found solace in the knowledge that their love would endure even beyond the ravages of war. As the siege wore on, Troy's defenders faced a choice that would define their legacy. They could surrender to the inevitable tide of history, yielding their city to the victors and accepting the harsh realities of defeat. Or they could stand firm, united in their determination to defend Troy's walls to the last breath, their courage a testament to the indomitable spirit of humanity. In the end, Troy's defenses were breached, not by the strength of its walls or the skill of its warriors, but by the caprice of fate and the machinations of the gods. The city fell in flames, its streets stained with the blood of its defenders, and its people scattered to the winds. But the legacy of Troy's defenses endured beyond its physical walls. It lived on in the tales of courage and sacrifice that echoed through the ages, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of overwhelming odds. And though Troy itself may have fallen, its spirit remained unbroken, a reminder that even in the darkest hours, there exists a light that refuses to be extinguished. In the annals of ancient warfare, amidst the clash of bronze and the roar of battle, there emerged a figure whose valor and nobility transcended the tumult of war. His name echoed through the ages, a beacon of courage and honor amidst the chaos of conflict. This is the story of Hector, the primary defender of Troy, and his legendary clashes with the heroes of Greece. Imagine standing upon the towering walls of Troy, where Hector, son of King Priam and prince of the city, stood as a bulwark against the encroaching tide of Greek aggression. His presence was a symbol of hope and resilience to his fellow Trojans, his every step upon the battlements a testament to his unwavering dedication to defend his beloved city from all who sought its destruction. Hector's prowess in battle was matched only by his love for his family and his people. His wife, Andromache, and their young son, Astyanax, awaited his return with hearts heavy with both fear and pride. Andromache's eyes followed Hector as he marched to war, her prayers whispered to the heavens for his safety echoing the hopes of every Trojan within the city walls. When Hector clashed with the heroes of Greece, it was not merely a contest of strength and skill, but a clash of ideals and destinies. His first great adversary was Ajax, towering and formidable, whose strength was matched only by his determination to breach Troy's defenses. The duels were fierce and relentless, the clash of their weapons ringing out like thunder amidst the cries of warriors and the clash of arms. But it was in his encounters with Achilles, the mightiest of the Greek warriors, that Hector faced his greatest trials. Achilles, with his divine armor and unmatched prowess in battle, stood as a formidable foe whose wrath was as legendary as his skill. Their rivalry was born of fate and fueled by destiny, a confrontation that would leave an indelible mark upon the annals of history. Their first meeting on the battlefield was a clash of titans, a duel that shook the very earth beneath their feet. Achilles, fueled by grief and rage over the death of his beloved companion Patroclus, sought vengeance with a fury that knew no bounds. Hector, steadfast and resolute, met him blade to blade, his courage a shield against the storm of Achilles' wrath. The duels were not just battles of physical prowess, but of moral and emotional significance. Achilles, driven by his thirst for glory and honor, sought to prove his dominance over Hector and all who stood in his path. Hector, fighting not just for victory but for the survival of his city and the legacy of his people, faced each blow with a courage born of love and duty. In their final confrontation, Hector and Achilles stood upon the blood-soaked sands outside the walls of Troy, a scene etched in the annals of time with the poignancy of tragedy and heroism. Hector, stripped of divine protection and facing the wrath of an invincible foe, fought with the ferocity of desperation. Achilles, driven by grief and fueled by divine wrath, pursued him relentlessly. The duel was a ballet of death and destiny, a clash of two heroes whose fates were intertwined by the threads of war and the whims of gods. Achilles' spear struck true, piercing Hector's armor and sealing his fate. The prince of Troy fell, his lifeblood staining the earth beneath him, his final thoughts of his beloved family and the city he had sworn to defend. As Hector's life slipped away, so too did the hopes of Troy's defenders. His death marked a turning point in the war, a moment of triumph for the Greeks and a devastating blow to the Trojans. 
the city mourned its fallen hero, his loss echoing through its streets and walls like a funeral dirge. But Hector's legacy endured beyond his mortal demise. His courage in the face of overwhelming odds, his devotion to his family and his people, became a beacon of inspiration for generations to come. His name was spoken with reverence and awe, a reminder that even in the darkest hours of war, there existed heroes whose light could never be extinguished. In the end, Hector stood as a testament to the power of love, honor, and resilience in the face of adversity. His clashes with the Greek heroes were not just battles fought upon the field of Troy, but epics of human courage and sacrifice that resonated through the ages, a reminder that even in the chaos of war, there existed moments of profound humanity and heroism in the mists of time, when the clash of swords and the cries of warriors echoed across the plains of Troy, a protracted war unfolded, a conflict whose toll would be measured not just in lives lost, but in the hearts broken and the dreams shattered on both sides of the battlefield. Imagine standing amidst the ruins of ancient Troy, where the scars of war marred the once glorious city walls. The air was thick with the scent of smoke and sorrow, a poignant reminder of the devastation wrought by years of unrelenting conflict. This was a war that defied easy resolution, its roots tangled in the ambitions of kings and the caprice of gods. For the Greeks, led by the mighty Agamemnon and bolstered by heroes like Achilles and Ajax, the war was a test of strength and honor. They had sailed across the wine-dark sea, driven by a desire for vengeance and the recovery of Helen, whose beauty had sparked the flames of conflict. Each day brought new challenges, new battles fought beneath the scorching sun and the watchful gaze of vengeful gods. But amidst the glory and the spoils of war lay a darker reality, a toll exacted in blood and tears. The Greek warriors, far from their homes and families, felt the weight of their absence keenly. They fought not just for glory, but for the promise of a triumphant return to their beloved Sparta, Mycenae, or Ithaca. Each victory came at a cost, a toll paid in the lives of comrades lost and the scars etched upon their souls. Achilles, the indomitable hero whose wrath had driven the Greeks to war, faced his own trials amidst the carnage. His grief over the death of Patroclus, his beloved companion, fueled his rage and propelled him to new heights of ferocity on the battlefield. Yet even as he reveled in his victories, Achilles bore the weight of his actions, a burden that grew heavier with each life taken in the name of vengeance. On the other side of the battlefield stood the defenders of Troy, led by the valiant Hector and supported by a city united in its defiance against Greek aggression. For Hector, the war was a crucible of leadership and sacrifice. He fought not just to protect the honor of his family and the legacy of his people, but to uphold the principles of courage and duty that defined his role as prince and defender. Troy's walls, once thought impenetrable, bore the scars of relentless siege warfare. The Greek siege engines pounded against them day and night, their battering rams a testament to Agamemnon's determination to breach the city's defenses. Inside Troy, the people lived in a constant state of vigilance and fear, their lives shaped by the ebb and flow of battle beyond their walls. But it was not just physical fortifications that sustained Troy in its darkest hour. The spirit of its people, their resilience in the face of overwhelming odds, became a beacon of hope amidst the chaos of war. Priam, aged yet unbowed, stood as a pillar of strength for his people, his voice a source of solace and determination in the face of Greek aggression. Andromache, wife of Hector, bore witness to the toll of war upon her beloved city and family. Her days were spent in prayer and preparation, her heart heavy with the knowledge of Hector's impending fate. She tended to young Astyanax, their infant son, whose future hung in the balance amidst the uncertainty of Troy's survival. As the war dragged on, its toll became increasingly unbearable for both sides. The fields outside Troy were littered with the fallen, their bodies the grim testament to the cost of conflict. The cries of the wounded echoed through the night, mingling with the mournful dirges of those who mourned their lost loved ones. In the Greek camp, Agamemnon wrestled with the consequences of his ambition. His dreams of conquest and glory were tempered by the realities of war, the sacrifices made by his men, the lives lost in pursuit of victory. Each decision weighed heavily upon him, a burden that grew heavier with each passing day. For Achilles, the war became a crucible of identity and purpose. 
His thirst for vengeance gave way to a deeper understanding of the human cost of war. He grappled with the realization that glory came at a price, a toll paid not just in bloodshed, but in the shattered lives left in its wake. And so, amidst the carnage and chaos, the protracted war took its toll on both sides. It was a conflict that tested the limits of human endurance and resilience, a testament to the complexities of honor, duty, and the pursuit of power. In its aftermath, the fields of Troy lay silent and still, their echoes haunted by the ghosts of those who had fought and died in the name of glory and pride in the echoes of history, where legends are born amidst the clash of swords and the cries of valorous men. The tales of famous battles and skirmishes during the Trojan War resound with the courage and sacrifice of those who fought upon the fields of glory. Picture yourself standing on the plains of Troy, where the fate of nations hung in the balance with each clash of bronze and iron. Here, amidst the dust and sweat of battle, heroes rose to meet their destiny with hearts ablaze and swords held high. This was a time when every skirmish carried the weight of legend, every battle a chapter in the epic saga of war. One of the most renowned battles of the Trojan War was the duel between Hector, champion of Troy, and Achilles, the indomitable hero of the Greeks. Their clash was more than a contest of strength and skill, it was a collision of destinies forged in the fires of divine wrath and mortal ambition. Hector, adorned in armor that gleamed like the sun, stood as the bulwark of Troy's defense. His shield, emblazoned with the image of a roaring lion, struck fear into the hearts of his foes. Achilles, fueled by grief and driven by vengeance, sought to avenge the death of his beloved companion Patroclus, a conflict that would shape the course of the war. The duel was a ballet of death and destiny, a dance of blades that reverberated through the ages. Achilles' spear struck true, piercing Hector's armor and sealing his fate. The prince of Troy fell, his lifeblood staining the earth beneath him, his final thoughts of his beloved family and the city he had sworn to defend. Yet, the battles did not end with this tragic duel. Throughout the long years of siege, the fields surrounding Troy bore witness to countless skirmishes and clashes that tested the mettle of both Greek and Trojan warriors. Each skirmish was a crucible of courage and sacrifice, where heroes emerged and legends were forged amidst the chaos of war. Ajax, the towering bulwark of the Greek forces, faced off against Hector's brother, the noble Paris, in a duel that showcased the clash of skill and strategy. Their swords danced in the air, their shields ringing with the clash of metal, as they fought for honor and glory upon the blood-soaked sands. Meanwhile, within the walls of Troy, skirmishes erupted between the defenders and the besieging Greek forces. The Trojans, led by brave warriors like Aeneas and Sarpedon, defended their city with a ferocity born of love for their homeland and a determination to defy the odds stacked against them. In one memorable skirmish, the Trojans launched a daring sortie against the Greek encampment under cover of darkness. Led by the cunning Odysseus, the Greeks fought fiercely to repel the Trojan assault, their shouts and battle cries echoing through the night as swords clashed and arrows flew. Each battle, each skirmish, carried with it the weight of human emotion and the toll of war. For every victory won upon the field, there were losses mourned within the walls of Troy and the Greek encampment alike. The cries of the wounded mingled with the lamentations of those who mourned their fallen comrades, their voices rising to the heavens like incense amidst the smoke and ashes of war. As the years passed and the conflict dragged on, the famous battles and skirmishes of the Trojan War became etched in the annals of history. There were tales of heroism and tragedy, of valor and sacrifice, that spoke to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of overwhelming odds. The Trojan War was more than a clash of armies, it was a crucible of human experience, where the boundaries between myth and reality blurred amidst the chaos of conflict. The battles and skirmishes fought upon the plains of Troy were not just chapters in a story, they were epics of courage and sacrifice that resonated through the ages, a testament to the enduring power of the human will in the face of adversity. Imagine a world where heroes walked among mortals, their names etched in the annals of history, their deeds echoing through the ages like thunder upon the fields of battle. In the epic tale of the Trojan War, the roles played by Greek and Trojan heroes alike were pivotal, each embodying courage, honor, and the relentless pursuit of glory amidst the chaos of war. Among the Greek heroes, none shone brighter than Ajax, the towering bulwark of the Greek forces. 
Known for his immense strength and unwavering valor, Ajax stood as a beacon of resilience in the face of adversity. Clad in armor that gleamed like the sun, he wielded his spear and shield with the skill of a warrior born to battle. In the heat of conflict, Ajax's presence was felt on every front. Whether leading the charge against Troy's defenses or defending the Greek ships from Trojan onslaughts, his courage was matched only by his determination to uphold the honor of his comrades in arms. His voice rang out amidst the din of battle, rallying the Greek warriors to stand firm against the tide of Trojan aggression. Beside Ajax stood Diomedes, known for his cunning and ferocity on the battlefield. Armed with a spear gifted by the goddess Athena herself, Diomedes cut a swath through Trojan ranks with unmatched skill and prowess. His eyes burned with the fire of righteous anger, his every strike a testament to his unwavering resolve. In one memorable encounter, Diomedes faced off against Aeneas, prince of Troy and a hero in his own right. The duel was a clash of titans, a contest of strength and strategy that tested the limits of mortal endurance. Each blow struck with the force of destiny, their swords flashing in the sunlight as they fought for honor and glory amidst the chaos of war. Meanwhile, Odysseus, the wily and resourceful king of Ithaca, played a pivotal role in shaping the course of the war. Known for his cunning intellect and mastery of strategy, Odysseus devised cunning schemes that outwitted Troy's defenders time and again. From the construction of the Trojan horse to his daring exploits within the walls of the city, Odysseus's ingenuity became the stuff of legend, a testament to the power of wit and guile in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds. On the side of Troy, heroes like Aeneas and Sarpedon stood as paragons of valor and honor. Aeneas, the son of Anchises and the goddess Aphrodite, fought with a courage born of love for his city and a determination to defend its walls against Greek aggression. His presence on the battlefield inspired his fellow Trojans to stand firm in the face of overwhelming adversity. Sarpedon, prince of Lycia and ally to Troy, brought with him a contingent of fierce warriors whose loyalty to their leader was matched only by their prowess in battle. Together, they formed a formidable force that challenged the Greeks at every turn, their swords cutting through the air with deadly precision. Yet amidst the clash of arms and the cries of battle, the heroes of both sides were not merely warriors, they were symbols of hope and resilience in a world torn apart by war. Their courage inspired their comrades to fight on, their sacrifices reminding all who witnessed their deeds of the cost of glory and the price of honor. In the end, the roles played by Greek and Trojan heroes alike were woven into the fabric of a war that transcended mortal understanding. Their names became synonymous with courage and sacrifice, their deeds etched into the collective memory of humanity as a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit in the face of adversity. As the dust settled upon the plains of Troy and the echoes of battle faded into silence, the heroes of the Trojan War remained immortalized in song and story. Their legends lived on, passed down through generations as a reminder of the triumphs and tragedies that define the human experience. For in their courage and sacrifice, they embodied the essence of heroism, a legacy that would endure long after the empires of men had crumbled into dust. In the heart of the Trojan War, amidst the clash of bronze and the cries of warriors, there arose a moment that would define the very essence of heroism and tragedy, the peak of the conflict between Hector, defender of Troy, and Achilles, the indomitable champion of the Greeks. Imagine the ancient plains of Troy, where the sun hung low in the sky, casting its golden light upon the battlefield strewn with the fallen. The air was thick with the scent of sweat and blood, a palpable tension that hung between the opposing armies like a shroud. This was a moment suspended in time, where destinies collided and the fates of nations trembled in the balance. Hector, adorned in armor that gleamed like starlight, stood before the gates of Troy like a titan of old. His heart burned with a fierce determination to defend his beloved city against the relentless onslaught of the Greeks. With each step he took, the ground trembled beneath him, his presence a testament to the valor and resilience of the Trojan spirit. Across the battlefield, Achilles, the mightiest of the Greek warriors, prowled like a lion hungry for vengeance. His wrath had been kindled by the death of his beloved companion Patroclus, slain at the hands of Hector in a moment of brutal combat. The weight of grief and fury bore down upon Achilles like a mantle, driving him ever forward in pursuit of retribution. 
The clash between Hector and Achilles was more than a battle of strength and skill, it was a collision of ideals and destinies. Hector fought not just for Troy, but for honor and duty, his every strike driven by a fierce determination to protect his family and his people. Achilles, fueled by grief and consumed by rage, fought with an intensity that bordered on the divine, his every movement a testament to the raw power of mortal wrath. The duel was a dance of death and destiny, their swords flashing in the sunlight as they circled each other with the grace of predators. Each blow struck with the force of thunder, the clang of their weapons echoing across the battlefield like a lamentation. The gods themselves looked down upon the spectacle, their hearts torn between admiration and sorrow for the mortal heroes caught in the grip of fate. Hector, brave and steadfast, held his ground against Achilles' relentless onslaught. With every swing of his sword, he sought to pierce the armor of his adversary, to strike a blow that would resonate through the annals of history. Achilles, undaunted and driven by a singular purpose, fought with a ferocity that bordered on the divine, his every strike guided by the hand of destiny. In a moment that would be forever etched in the memory of mortals and immortals alike, Achilles seized his opportunity. With a swift and deadly stroke, he pierced Hector's defenses, his spear finding its mark with unerring accuracy. The Prince of Troy staggered, his breath ragged, his strength waning beneath the weight of his armor. As Hector fell to his knees, Achilles stood over him with a gaze that burned with triumph and sorrow. In that fleeting moment, the clash of arms gave way to a profound silence, a silence that spoke volumes of the tragedy that had befallen two noble warriors bound by the inexorable chains of fate. With his dying breath, Hector spoke of his beloved wife Andromache and their son Astyanax, whose futures now hung in the balance. He entrusted his family to the mercy of the gods and begged Achilles to ensure their safety, a plea that echoed through the ages as a testament to the humanity that binds us all, even in the midst of war. The peak of the conflict between Hector and Achilles was more than a battle, it was a crucible of heroism and tragedy, a testament to the frailty of mortal ambition and the enduring power of love and honor. This was a story that transcended the boundaries of myth and reality, a tale that continues to resonate with the timeless themes of courage, sacrifice, and the inexorable march of destiny. As the sun dipped below the horizon and the echoes of battle faded into the twilight, Achilles stood alone amidst the fallen, his heart heavy with the weight of what had transpired. In that moment, he understood the true cost of his wrath, the toll exacted not just in lives lost, but in the shattered hopes and dreams of those who had fought and died in the name of glory and pride. And so, amidst the ruins of ancient Troy, where the shadows of heroes still lingered, the peak of the conflict between Hector and Achilles remained etched in memory, a testament to the enduring legacy of those who dared to defy the gods and carve their names upon the annals of history. Imagine standing amidst the ancient walls of Troy, where the air is thick with the scent of smoke and the echoes of battle still linger in the distance. In this crucible of heroism and tragedy, there was a moment that shook the very foundation of Troy, the death of Hector, the noble defender of the city, and its profound impact on the morale of his people. Hector, adorned in armor that gleamed in the sunlight, stood as the bulwark of Troy's defense against the relentless onslaught of the Greeks. His bravery was legendary, his sword arm strong and true, his heart bound by duty and love for his family. He was more than a warrior, he was a beacon of hope amidst the chaos of war, a symbol of resilience and honor in the face of overwhelming odds. On the plains of Troy, Hector faced his greatest adversary yet, Achilles, the invincible champion of the Greeks driven by grief and vengeance. The duel was a clash of titans, a contest that would decide the fate of nations and echo through the annals of history. Each blow struck with the force of destiny, their swords flashing in the sunlight as they circled each other with the grace of predators. In a moment that would haunt the hearts of Troy for generations to come, Achilles found his mark. With a swift and deadly stroke, he pierced Hector's defenses, his spear finding its mark with unerring accuracy. The Prince of Troy staggered, his breath ragged, his strength waning beneath the weight of his armor. As Hector fell to his knees, the ground beneath him stained with his lifeblood, a cry of anguish rose from the walls of Troy. The defenders looked on in horror as their champion, their protector, succumbed to the relentless tide of war. The air was heavy with grief, the cries of mourning echoing through the city like a dirge for the fallen. 
For the Trojans, Hector was more than a prince. He was a beloved son, a devoted husband to Andromache, and a father to young Astyanax. His death struck at the heart of their morale, shattering their resolve and casting a pall of despair over their once indomitable spirit. The walls of Troy, once impregnable, now seemed to tremble with the weight of their grief. Andromache, Hector's faithful wife, stood upon the ramparts and gazed out upon the battlefield where her beloved had fallen. Her heart was torn asunder, her soul consumed by sorrow as she mourned the loss of her brave husband. In her arms, their infant son Astyanax cried out, oblivious to the tragedy that had befallen his family. The Trojans gathered around Hector's lifeless form, their faces etched with sorrow and disbelief. They had placed their hopes in his strength, his courage, and his unwavering determination to defend their city against all who dared to threaten its walls. Now, those hopes lay shattered upon the blood-soaked earth, the dreams of victory slipping away like sand through their fingers. In the aftermath of Hector's death, the morale of the Trojans plummeted. Fear and uncertainty gripped their hearts as they faced the grim reality of an uncertain future. The loss of their champion had dealt a devastating blow to their confidence, leaving them vulnerable to the relentless onslaught of the Greek forces encamped outside their gates. Yet amidst the despair, there flickered a glimmer of resilience, a determination to honor Hector's memory and defend their city to the last. They rallied around Priam, their aging king, and drew strength from the memory of their fallen hero. They knew that Hector's sacrifice had not been in vain, that his bravery and courage would live on in the hearts of all who fought to defend Troy. As the sun set upon the besieged city, casting long shadows upon the walls where Hector had once stood, the Trojans prepared for the trials yet to come. Their hearts were heavy with grief, but their spirits were unbroken. For they knew that as long as they remembered Hector's valor and sacrifice, the flame of hope would continue to burn bright within their hearts. And so, amidst the ruins of ancient Troy, where the echoes of Hector's death still reverberated through the air, the Trojans stood united in their determination to defy the hands of fate and right their own destiny. They would honor Hector's memory with every sword stroke, every arrow loosed, and every heartbeat that echoed through the city walls. For in the end, Hector's death had not defeated them, it had only strengthened their resolve to fight on, to defend their beloved Troy against all who sought to conquer it. His legacy lived on in the courage of his people, in their unwavering determination to defy the odds and prove that even in the face of tragedy, the spirit of heroism endures. Imagine the solemn aftermath of Hector's tragic fall on the blood-soaked plains of Troy. As the dust settled and the echoes of battle faded, the Trojans faced the daunting task of bidding farewell to their fallen hero, a man whose courage had been their shield and whose sacrifice weighed heavy upon their hearts. Hector, the noble defender of Troy, lay cold upon the earth, his once vibrant spirit now stilled by the merciless hand of war. His lifeless form bore the scars of countless battles, testament to the fierce determination with which he had fought to protect his beloved city and its people. Now, amidst the wreckage of conflict, his comrades and loved ones gathered to honor his memory and pay tribute to his valor. The city of Troy, once bustling with life and song, now echoed with the mournful wails of grieving women and the solemn dirges of men clad in mourning garb. Priam, the aged king, stood at the forefront of the solemn procession, his weathered face etched with sorrow as he gazed upon the lifeless body of his beloved son. Beside him stood Andromache, Hector's faithful wife, her grief-stricken eyes fixed upon the fallen hero who had been her pillar of strength and the father of their young son Astyanax. The funeral rites for Hector were not merely a ceremony, but a testament to the depth of love and respect he had earned throughout his life. Trojans from all walks of life gathered to pay their respects, their faces drawn with sorrow yet filled with reverence for the man who had given everything to defend their city. Women wept openly, their voices rising in lamentation for the loss of a hero whose bravery had inspired them all. The funeral pyre, built upon a towering mound of wood and adorned with flowers and precious oils, awaited Hector's final journey. His body, cleansed and anointed, was laid upon the pyre with utmost care, a gesture of honor and respect befitting a warrior of his stature. The air was heavy with the scent of incense and the smoke of burning offerings, a solemn tribute to the departed soul whose spirit now soared amongst the stars. 
As flames leapt skyward, casting an ethereal glow upon the gathered mourners, the lamentations grew louder, mingling with the crackling of the fire. Priam, his voice thick with emotion, spoke words of farewell and gratitude to his fallen son, recounting Hector's deeds of valor and the legacy he had left behind. His words echoed through the hearts of all who stood witness, a poignant reminder of the sacrifices made in the name of honor and duty. Andromache, clad in mourning attire yet bearing herself with grace and strength, approached the pyre with young Astyanax cradled in her arms. The boy, too young to understand the magnitude of loss, reached out towards his father's lifeless form with innocent curiosity. His mother held him close, her tears mingling with the ashes that drifted upon the breeze, as she whispered words of love and farewell to the man who had been both husband and hero. The Trojans, gathered in solemn vigil around the funeral pyre, raised their voices in a final chorus of sorrow and remembrance. They spoke of Hector's courage in the face of adversity, his unwavering loyalty to his family and people, and the indelible mark he had left upon their hearts. Songs of lamentation echoed through the night, carrying Hector's spirit on its journey to the realm of the ancestors, where heroes awaited him with open arms. As the flames gradually consumed the pyre and Hector's earthly remains were transformed into ash, a profound silence descended upon the city of Troy. The Trojans stood united in their grief, yet strengthened by the knowledge that Hector's spirit would live on in their memories and in the tales passed down through generations. His sacrifice had not been in vain, it had forged a bond of courage and resilience that would endure long after the embers of his funeral pyre had faded. In the days that followed, the Trojans continued to honor Hector's memory through rituals and offerings, ensuring that his legacy would remain alive within the walls of their beloved city. His name became synonymous with bravery and sacrifice, a beacon of hope and inspiration for all who called Troy their home. And amidst the ruins of war and devastation, his spirit lingered like a guiding star, reminding them that even in the darkest of times, the flame of heroism burns eternal. Imagine a world where the heavens themselves stirred with the passions and conflicts of mortals, where gods and goddesses walked among men, shaping the destiny of nations with their divine will. Such was the world of the Trojan War, where the interventions of deities held sway over the fates of heroes and the outcomes of battles. From the outset, the gods and goddesses of Mount Olympus were deeply embroiled in the conflict between Greeks and Trojans. Their favor or wrath could turn the tide of war in an instant, their motivations as complex and turbulent as the storms that swept across the Aegean Sea. At the heart of this divine drama was the infamous judgment of Paris, a moment that ignited the flames of war. Eris, the goddess of discord, had tossed a golden apple inscribed with the words for the fairest among the goddesses Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite. Each coveted the prize, and Zeus, king of the gods, fearing the consequences of favoring one over the others, tasked Paris, prince of Troy, with the impossible decision. Aphrodite, goddess of love, promised Paris the love of the most beautiful mortal woman, Helen of Sparta, if he chose her as the fairest. Seduced by her offer, Paris awarded the apple to Aphrodite, thus earning the enmity of Hera and Athena. This act of favoritism and betrayal set in motion a chain of events that would engulf both Troy and Greece in a decade-long war. The abduction of Helen by Paris, facilitated by Aphrodite, further fueled the conflict. Menelaus, Helen's aggrieved husband and king of Sparta, rallied his Greek allies to exact retribution upon Troy for the perceived insult and injustice. But behind the mortal drama, the gods and goddesses of Olympus played their own games of power and intrigue, manipulating events from above like pieces on a cosmic chessboard. Zeus, the king of gods, sought to maintain a fragile balance among his divine offspring, sometimes intervening to prevent the annihilation of mortals and other times allowing the war to escalate, driven by the inexorable will of fate. Hera, queen of the gods and protector of marriage, was relentless in her pursuit of vengeance against Paris and Troy, using her influence to sway battles and hinder Trojan efforts. Athena, goddess of wisdom and war, stood steadfastly by the Greeks, guiding their heroes in battle with her strategic brilliance and martial prowess. Her interventions were decisive, often turning the tide of combat in favor of the Greek forces, as seen in her support of heroes like Diomedes and Odysseus. 
On the Trojan side, Apollo, god of prophecy and archery, defended the city walls with his divine skill, shielding Hector and the Trojan defenders from harm with his protective mantle. Yet even the gods were not immune to the consequences of their actions. Ares, god of war, suffered humiliating defeats at the hands of mortal warriors like Diomedes, who dared to challenge his divine authority on the battlefield. Amidst the chaos of war, the goddesses Artemis and Hera intervened to protect the Trojan hero Aeneas, ensuring his safe passage from the battlefield when facing overwhelming odds. Their divine intervention saved Aeneas from certain death, allowing him to fulfill his destiny as a founder of Rome and a legendary figure in Trojan lore. But perhaps the most poignant and tragic intervention of all was the story of Achilles, the greatest warrior of the Greeks, and his tumultuous relationship with the gods. Thetis, his mother and a sea nymph, had dipped him in the river Styx as an infant, rendering him invulnerable to harm, save for his heel, where she had held him. Achilles' wrath, sparked by the death of his beloved companion Patroclus at the hands of Hector, was fueled by his grief and the divine armor crafted by Hephaestus, god of blacksmiths. His duel with Hector, under the watchful eyes of the gods, epitomized the tragic intersection of mortal fate and divine influence. In the end, the interventions of the gods and goddesses shaped the course of the Trojan War in ways both profound and unpredictable. Their passions and rivalries mirrored those of mortals, their actions the reflection of the complexities and contradictions inherent in the human experience. As Troy's fate hung in the balance, the heavens themselves trembled with the weight of their divine influence, forever imprinting their mark upon the annals of history. Imagine a world where the gods of ancient Greece, mighty and capricious, walked the earth and shaped the destinies of mortals with their divine influence. Among them, Apollo, Athena, and Hera stood as formidable figures, each wielding their powers to sway the tides of war during the epic saga of the Trojan War. Apollo, radiant god of the sun and master of archery, was revered for his prophetic wisdom and his role as protector of Troy. From the towering heights of Mount Olympus, he gazed upon the mortal realm with watchful eyes, guiding his favorite city through the tumultuous storms of conflict. His golden bow sang with deadly precision on the battlefield, his arrow striking down Greek warriors who dared to breach the walls of Troy. In the midst of battle, Apollo's presence was felt as a radiant beacon of hope for the Trojans. His divine shield enveloped their defenders, granting them courage and strength to withstand the relentless assaults of their Greek adversaries. When Hector, noble prince of Troy, stood defiant against the Greek champion Achilles, it was Apollo who stood by his side, lending him the courage to face the wrath of the mighty Greek warrior. But Apollo's influence extended beyond the battlefield, his divine presence was felt in every corner of Troy's daily life. As the god of healing and music, he brought solace to the wounded and inspired the hearts of poets and musicians who sought to immortalize the heroism of Trojan defenders. His lyre's melodic strains echoed through the city streets, weaving tales of valor and sacrifice that stirred the souls of all who heard them. Athena, goddess of wisdom and strategic warfare, watched over the Greeks with a keen and calculating eye. From her seat atop Mount Olympus, she devised cunning strategies and tactics to outmaneuver the Trojans, guiding the Greek heroes with her wise counsel and unwavering determination. Her piercing gray eyes surveyed the battlefield with clarity, discerning weaknesses in the enemy's defenses and empowering her mortal champions with divine insight. In the heart of Greek warriors like Diomedes and Odysseus, Athena's presence was palpable. She whispered words of encouragement and guidance in their ears, urging them onward in their relentless pursuit of victory. Her divine shield protected them from harm, deflecting the blows of Trojan spears and arrows that sought to pierce their armor. Yet Athena's role extended beyond mere military prowess. She was also a patroness of crafts and the arts, inspiring Greek artisans to create masterful works of sculpture and architecture that celebrated their triumphs in war. Her temple in Athens, the majestic Parthenon, stood as a testament to her enduring influence and the reverence with which she was held by the people of Greece. Hera, queen of the gods and protector of marriage, harbored a deep-seated animosity towards the Trojans, stemming from the judgment of Paris and the abduction of Helen. Her wrath burned fiercely against the city of Troy, driving her to manipulate events from behind the scenes in her relentless quest for vengeance. 
She stirred the hearts of Greek leaders like Agamemnon and Menelaus, goading them into action with promises of glory and retribution. From her throne on Mount Olympus, Hera's commands resonated with the force of thunder, compelling the Greek armies to muster their forces and set sail for Troy. Her divine influence emboldened their resolve and fueled their determination to reclaim Helen and restore honor to their aggrieved nation. Yet Hera's motives were not solely driven by rage and vengeance. Beneath her regal exterior lay a profound concern for the well-being of her mortal subjects. She intervened in moments of crisis, offering guidance and protection to Greek heroes who found themselves ensnared in the chaotic currents of war. Her wisdom and foresight proved invaluable in steering the course of events towards their inevitable conclusion. Together, Apollo, Athena, and Hera formed a triumvirate of divine power that shaped the destiny of nations during the tumultuous era of the Trojan War. Their interventions were not merely acts of caprice or whim, they were calculated maneuvers designed to uphold the cosmic balance and safeguard the principles of justice and order. Through their actions, they left an indelible mark upon the annals of history, forever immortalized in the epic tales of heroism and tragedy that continue to resonate with audiences across the ages. In the ancient world of gods and mortals, prophecy was a thread that wove through the fabric of fate, guiding the course of nations and individuals alike. In the epic saga of the Trojan War, prophecies and divine machinations played a pivotal role, shaping the destinies of heroes and civilizations with their eerie foresight and immutable decrees. At the heart of this celestial drama stood the Oracle of Delphi, a sacred sanctuary nestled upon the slopes of Mount Parnassus. Here, amid the fragrant scent of laurel leaves and the lingering whispers of the Pythia, mortal men sought answers from the gods themselves. The oracle's prophecies were spoken in riddles, veiled in ambiguity yet pregnant with meaning, their interpretations shaping the decisions of kings and warriors across the ancient world. One such prophecy foretold the fall of Troy, its towering walls breached by the relentless onslaught of Greek warriors. From the moment Paris, Prince of Troy, defied fate and claimed Helen as his prize, the oracle's words echoed through the halls of Olympus and the courts of mortal kings. It was said that Troy would never fall if the Palladium, a sacred statue of Athena, remained within its walls. Yet cunning Odysseus and Diomedes dared to sneak into the city and steal it, ensuring that the prophecy came true. But prophecies were not mere words written in the stars, they were potent forces that guided the hands of mortals and gods alike. In the Greek camp, prophets like Calchas, gifted with divine insight, interpreted omens and portents that foreshadowed the outcomes of battles and the fates of heroes. Their words carried weight, their warnings heeded by kings and commanders who sought to appease the gods and secure victory in the face of overwhelming odds. Divine machinations, too, shaped the course of the war as gods and goddesses maneuvered behind the scenes to fulfill their own agendas and influence the actions of mortals. Hera's relentless pursuit of vengeance against Troy, sparked by the abduction of Helen and the insult of the judgment of Paris, spurred her to orchestrate alliances and manipulate events in her favor. She whispered in the ears of Greek kings and warriors, goading them into action with promises of glory and eternal renown. Meanwhile, Apollo, radiant god of the sun and master of archery, defended the walls of Troy with his divine shield and guided the arrows of Trojan archers with deadly precision. His presence on the battlefield was a beacon of hope for the defenders of Troy, his golden bow striking down Greek warriors who dared to breach the city's defenses. Yet even Apollo's power was not without limits, his divine protection could be thwarted by the strategic cunning of mortal heroes and the relentless determination of their cause. Athena, goddess of wisdom and strategic warfare, devised cunning plans and strategies to outweat the Trojans and guide the Greek armies to victory. From her seat atop Mount Olympus, she watched over her mortal champions with unwavering devotion, offering them divine inspiration and guidance in their darkest hours. Her interventions were decisive, her influence shaping the outcomes of battles and the fate of Troy itself. Yet amidst the chaos and carnage of war, prophecies remained an enigma, their true meanings often revealed only in hindsight. The fate of Achilles, greatest of the Greek warriors, was foretold long before his birth, the choice between a long, peaceful life and a short, glorious one. His mother, 
Thetis, had sought to protect him from harm by dipping him in the river Styx, making him invulnerable save for his heel, where she had held him. This vulnerability ultimately led to his downfall, fulfilling the prophecy of his untimely death at the hands of Paris, guided by Apollo. In the end, prophecies and divine machinations intertwined with mortal ambitions and passions, shaping the course of the Trojan War in ways both profound and unpredictable. They were the unseen hands that guided the destinies of heroes and civilizations, their influence echoing through the annals of history and inspiring tales of heroism and tragedy that continue to resonate with audiences across the ages. Imagine a cunning ruse born of desperation and vengeance, crafted amidst the bloodstained fields of Troy, the legendary Trojan horse. This monumental tale of deception and strategy, etched in the annals of ancient history, speaks of a pivotal moment that would seal the fate of a city and echo through the ages. As the war between Greeks and Trojans dragged on for a decade, both sides faced mounting casualties and weary hearts. The Greeks, under the command of cunning Odysseus and mighty Agamemnon, devised a plan that would change the course of history. Besieging the seemingly impregnable walls of Troy, they yearned for a swift end to their protracted struggle. It was amidst this backdrop of stalemate and despair that the idea of the Trojan horse was conceived, a colossal wooden monument that would tower over the plains of Troy. Constructed from the sturdy pines of Mount Ida, it stood as a symbol of deceit and subterfuge, its purpose veiled in shadows until the final, fateful night. The Trojan horse was not merely a wooden sculpture, but a masterpiece of deception, designed to infiltrate the heart of Troy's defenses under the guise of a gift, a gesture of conciliation and tribute from the defeated Greeks. Craftsmen and artisans toiled tirelessly, their hammers and chisels shaping the behemoth into a semblance of peace amidst the chaos of war. As the horse took form, whispers of its true purpose spread among the Greek ranks like wildfire, igniting hope and trepidation in equal measure. For Odysseus, mastermind behind the scheme, it represented a gambit born of desperation and cunning, a last-ditch effort to breach the walls that had defied their siege for so long. The construction of the Trojan horse was not merely a feat of engineering, but a testament to the indomitable spirit of mankind in the face of adversity. It stood as a monument to the ingenuity and resilience of the Greek warriors who had endured a decade of hardship and sacrifice in their quest for victory. Yet for the Trojans, unaware of the impending doom concealed within its hollow belly, the horse symbolized a glimmer of hope amidst the ravages of war. From the heights of Troy's battlements, they beheld its towering form with awe and curiosity, ignorant of the betrayal that lay dormant within its wooden embrace. The purpose of the Trojan horse was twofold, to breach the impenetrable walls of Troy and to exact vengeance upon the city that had defied the might of Greece for so long. It was a symbol of retribution and reckoning, a harbinger of doom disguised as a gift of reconciliation. On the final night of its construction, Greek warriors concealed themselves within the belly of the horse, their hearts pounding with anticipation as they awaited the signal to unleash their fury upon the unsuspecting Trojans. The air was thick with tension, the moon casting an eerie glow upon the deserted plains where destiny would be decided. As the hours waned and the city of Troy slumbered, the horse stood sentinel outside the gates, a silent sentinel waiting to fulfill its dark purpose. Inside its hollow belly, the Greek warriors held their breath, their swords and spears poised for the moment of reckoning that would echo through eternity. When dawn broke over the horizon, Troy awoke to a scene of devastation and despair. The once impregnable walls lay breached, the streets echoing with the cries of anguish as Greek warriors poured forth from the depths of the Trojan horse. The city burned with the fires of betrayal and vengeance, its defenders overwhelmed by the sudden onslaught. The conception, construction, and purpose of the Trojan horse became a cautionary tale of hubris and deception, a stark reminder of the consequences of underestimating one's adversaries. It remains a testament to the enduring power of strategy and cunning in the theater of war, a symbol of both triumph and tragedy that continues to captivate the imagination of storytellers and historians alike. In the annals of ancient warfare, few tales resonate with the sheer audacity and cunning displayed by the Greeks in the fall of Troy. This epic saga of deception and betrayal, immortalized in myth and legend, unfolds like a tragic opera of love, vengeance, and the inexorable march of destiny. 
The siege of Troy had dragged on for a decade, a protracted struggle that tested the resolve of both Greek and Trojan alike. As the mighty walls of the city stood defiant against the relentless assaults of the Greek armies, hope dwindled among the besiegers. It seemed that Troy, protected by its impregnable fortifications and the valor of its defenders, would endure for eternity. Yet amidst the despair, a whisper of desperation and audacity took root in the hearts of the Greek commanders, led by the indomitable Agamemnon and the wily Odysseus. It was Odysseus, famed for his cunning and guile, who conceived a plan that would shake the foundations of Troy to their core, the Trojan horse. Crafted from the sturdy pines of Mount Ida, the Trojan horse towered over the plains of Troy as a monument to deceit. It was not merely a wooden sculpture, but a vessel of doom, concealing within its belly a select band of Greek warriors, their swords and spears poised to wreak havoc upon the unsuspecting city. The construction of the Trojan horse was a testament to the ingenuity and determination of the Greek warriors, who labored tirelessly under the watchful gaze of their commanders. Each timber and plank was meticulously carved and assembled, its form gradually taking shape as a symbol of both deceit and retribution. As the horse neared completion, tension mounted within the Greek camp, where whispers of its true purpose spread like wildfire. Some viewed it with awe and reverence, a testament to the cunning of their leaders and the resilience of their cause. Others regarded it with trepidation, haunted by visions of the carnage and chaos it would unleash upon Troy. On the fateful night of its deployment, the Greek warriors concealed themselves within the horse's hollow belly, their breath held in anticipation as they awaited the signal to strike. The air was thick with anticipation, the moon casting an eerie glow upon the deserted plains where destiny would be decided. Inside the walls of Troy, celebrations rang out as the Trojans rejoiced in their apparent victory over the Greeks. Little did they know that their doom approached swiftly and silently, borne upon the backs of their own hubris and the cunning of their adversaries. When dawn broke over the horizon, Troy awoke to a scene of unimaginable horror and devastation. The once impregnable walls lay breached, the streets echoing with the clash of steel and the cries of anguish as Greek warriors poured forth from the depths of the Trojan horse. The city burned with the fires of betrayal and vengeance, its defenders overwhelmed by the sudden onslaught. In the chaos and confusion that ensued, heroes rose and fell, their fates intertwined with the inexorable tide of war. Priam, noble king of Troy, fell beneath the blade of Achilles' wrath, his legacy consumed by the flames of Greek vengeance. Hector, champion of Troy, met his tragic end at the hands of Achilles, his valor and bravery immortalized in the annals of history. The fall of Troy was not merely a military conquest, but a testament to the power of deception and the capricious whims of the gods. For even as the Greeks reveled in their hard-won victory, they bore witness to the consequences of their own hubris and ambition. The gods themselves looked on with bated breath, their divine machinations shaping the destinies of mortals and nations alike. As the city smoldered in ruin and the echoes of battle faded into silence, the tale of the Trojan horse became a cautionary tale of pride and folly, a stark reminder of the cost of underestimating one's adversaries. It remains a testament to the enduring power of strategy and cunning in the theater of war, a symbol of both triumph and tragedy that continues to captivate the imagination of storytellers and historians alike. Amidst the ruins of Troy, where once the proud city stood defiant against the tides of war, lies a tale of tragedy and loss that resonates through the corridors of time. The fall of Troy was not merely the culmination of a decade-long siege, but a cataclysm that shattered lives and destinies, leaving in its wake a trail of sorrow and despair that would echo through generations. For the Trojan royal family, whose lineage traced back to the gods themselves, the consequences were nothing short of devastating. King Priam, once a revered and beloved ruler whose wisdom and benevolence were renowned throughout the ancient world, met his tragic end amidst the flames and chaos of the city he had sworn to protect. Priam, whose name once evoked respect and admiration, now lay slain upon the blood-soaked stones of his own palace. His noble heart, burdened by the weight of his kingdom's demise and the loss of his beloved sons and daughters, ceased to beat as the Greek invaders laid waste to everything he held dear. Hecuba, queen of Troy, whose grace and dignity had been a beacon of strength in times of adversity, now found herself a captive amidst the ruins of her once proud city. 
Her heart, heavy with grief for her fallen husband and children, bore witness to the desecration of everything she had cherished, the golden halls of her palace, the sacred altars of her gods, and the laughter of her grandchildren, silenced forever by the ravages of war. Andromache, wife of Hector and mother of their beloved son Astyanax, faced a fate more tragic than death itself. As the Greek victors laid claim to the spoils of war, they tore her infant son from her arms and cast him from the heights of Troy's battlements, an act of cruelty that would haunt her dreams for eternity. For the people of Troy, whose lives had been intertwined with the fate of their beloved city, the aftermath of its fall was a nightmare from which there was no awakening. Homes lay in ruins, once bustling streets now silent save for the mournful cries of survivors searching for lost loved ones amidst the rubble and debris. The Trojan women, once the pride and joy of their households, now found themselves slaves and concubines to their conquerors, forced to abandon their homeland and embark upon a journey into the unknown, their hearts heavy with sorrow and despair. As the flames of Troy's destruction engulfed the city, so too did the hopes and dreams of its people. The temples of their gods lay desecrated, their sacred statues shattered upon the cold stones of their sanctuaries. The echoes of prayers and hymns that had once filled the air with reverence and devotion were silenced forever by the horrors of war. Yet amidst the despair and devastation, a flicker of hope remained, the enduring spirit of the Trojan people, whose resilience and courage would defy the passage of time. They clung to the memories of their lost loved ones, their laughter and tears echoing through the corridors of their hearts like whispers carried on the wind. For the Greeks, whose triumph had come at such a staggering cost, the spoils of war offered little solace for the carnage and destruction they had wrought. The glory of victory was overshadowed by the haunting specter of their own mortality, the realization that their conquest had come at the expense of countless lives and the irrevocable loss of a city that had stood as a testament to the heights of human achievement. In the aftermath of Troy's fall, amidst the ruins and wreckage that bore witness to the end of an era, the echoes of its legacy endure. The tale of the Trojan War, with its heroes and villains, gods and mortals, speaks to the timeless truths of love and loss, honor and betrayal, that resonate with the human experience. As the sun sets upon the fallen city of Troy, its story lives on in the hearts and minds of all who hear its echoes, a testament to the enduring power of myth and legend and the indomitable spirit of those who dare to defy the gods themselves in pursuit of glory and immortality. In the wake of the Trojan War, as the dust settled over the ruins of once mighty Troy, the world stood witness to the aftermath of a conflict that had reshaped the destinies of both Greeks and Trojans alike. The echoes of battle still reverberated through the hearts of those who had fought and survived, leaving behind a landscape scarred not only by physical devastation but also by the profound emotional and spiritual toll exacted upon all who had been touched by its fury. For the Greeks, whose long and arduous campaign had finally culminated in victory, the aftermath brought a bittersweet mixture of triumph and sorrow. Their journey to Troy had been fueled by the quest for honor, vengeance, and the recovery of the abducted Helen, a cause that had united the Greek city-states in a coalition that had seemed unbreakable. Yet, as they surveyed the smoldering ruins of the city they had fought so hard to conquer, they could not escape the haunting realization of the sacrifices that victory had demanded. Agamemnon, the ambitious and cunning king who had marshaled the Greek forces to war, found himself ensnared in the intricate web of political intrigue and personal vendettas that had plagued him throughout the conflict. His triumph over Troy had come at a staggering cost, his own family torn apart by betrayal and tragedy, his once loyal warriors scattered to the winds, their valor tempered by the harsh realities of war. Achilles, the indomitable warrior whose wrath had fueled the Greek onslaught, now grappled with the emptiness that gnawed at his soul in the aftermath of Hector's death. The glory he had sought on the battlefield had left him hollow, his heart heavy with the weight of lost comrades and unfulfilled promises. The spoils of war offered little solace for the wounds that time could never fully heal, the ache of grief for Patroclus, his beloved companion and the bitter knowledge that even the greatest of heroes could not escape the inevitability of fate. And for Odysseus, whose cunning had played a pivotal role in the Greek victory, the journey home would prove to be an odyssey in itself, a decade-long struggle against the capricious whims of the gods and the treacherous seas that separated him from his beloved Ithaca. 
his longing for home and family became a beacon of hope amidst the chaos of war, a testament to the enduring power of love and perseverance in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds. Yet amidst the triumphs and tribulations of the Greeks, the aftermath of the war bore witness to the shattered dreams and shattered lives of the Trojan survivors. For them, the fall of Troy had brought not only physical destruction, but also the annihilation of their way of life, their homes raised to the ground, their loved ones lost or enslaved, their proud city reduced to a smoldering ruin. Priam, the once mighty king whose wisdom and benevolence had been renowned throughout the ancient world, now lay slain amidst the ashes of his own palace. His death marked the end of an era, an era of peace and prosperity that had flourished under his rule, now extinguished by the relentless tide of war. Hecuba, queen of Troy, whose grace and resilience had been a source of strength for her people in times of adversity, now found herself a captive in a foreign land. Her heart, heavy with grief for her fallen husband and children, bore witness to the desecration of everything she had held dear, the sacred altars of her gods, the laughter of her grandchildren silenced forever by the brutality of war. Andromache, widow of Hector and mother of their beloved son Astyanax, faced a fate more cruel than death itself. As the Greek victors laid claim to the spoils of war, they tore her infant son from her arms and cast him from the heights of Troy's battlements, an act of cruelty that would haunt her dreams for eternity. For the Trojan women, whose lives had been intertwined with the fate of their beloved city, the aftermath of Troy's fall was a nightmare from which there was no awakening. They were forced to abandon their homeland and embark upon a journey into the unknown, their hearts heavy with sorrow and despair. Their once proud city lay in ruins, its temples desecrated, its streets silent save for the mournful cries of survivors searching for lost loved ones amidst the rubble and debris. Yet amidst the devastation and despair, a flicker of hope remained, the enduring spirit of the Trojan people, whose resilience and courage defied the passage of time. They clung to the memories of their lost loved ones, their laughter and tears echoing through the corridors of their hearts like whispers carried on the wind. As the sun set upon the fallen city of Troy, its story lived on in the hearts and minds of all who heard its echoes, a testament to the enduring power of myth and legend and the indomitable spirit of those who dared to defy the gods themselves in pursuit of glory and immortality. In the aftermath of the Trojan War, as the dust settled and the echoes of battle faded, the fate of key figures such as Helen, Menelaus, Agamemnon, and others became intertwined with the legacy of a conflict that had reshaped the ancient world. Their stories, marked by betrayal, resilience, and the inexorable hand of fate continue to resonate through the annals of mythology, echoing the triumphs and tragedies that defined their lives. At the heart of this tale lies Helen of Sparta, whose beauty had sparked a thousand ships to sail to Troy. Once coveted as the most beautiful woman in the world, her destiny had been irrevocably altered by the choices made in the throes of passion and ambition. As Troy fell, Helen found herself once again in the halls of Menelaus, her rightful husband. The years of war had left their mark upon her, her heart heavy with the weight of remorse and regret for the devastation her allure had wrought upon countless lives. Menelaus, the betrayed husband whose love for Helen had driven him to pursue her across the Aegean Sea and beyond, stood at the precipice of victory and loss. Despite reclaiming his queen, the scars of betrayal ran deep. The years of battle had hardened his resolve, yet beneath the armor of a warrior beat the heart of a man who had lost not only his honor, but also his innocence amidst the turmoil of war. Agamemnon, the ambitious and cunning king whose thirst for power had led the Greeks to Troy's shores, faced a reckoning that transcended the boundaries of mortal conflict. His triumph had come at a staggering cost, his own family torn asunder by the brutal machinations of gods and men alike. The shadows of his past deeds haunted him, their echoes reverberating through the corridors of his soul as he navigated the treacherous waters of kingship in the aftermath of war. And for Achilles, the indomitable warrior whose wrath had fueled the Greek onslaught, the aftermath of Hector's death had brought a reckoning of a different kind. His quest for glory and vengeance had left a trail of blood and sorrow in its wake, his heart torn between the demands of duty and the longing for peace. The spoils of war offered little solace for the wounds that time could never fully heal, the ache of grief for Patroclus, his beloved companion, and the bitter knowledge that even the greatest of heroes could not escape the inevitability of fate. 
As the Greek leaders grappled with the consequences of their actions, the legacy of the Trojan War continued to unfold in ways that defied mortal understanding. The gods, whose machinations had shaped the course of the conflict, continued to wield their influence over the lives of mortals with capricious abandon. Apollo, Athena, Hera, and their divine brethren watched from Olympus as the destinies of kings and queens played out upon the stage of history, their interventions both a blessing and a curse upon those who dared to defy their will. In the years that followed, the echoes of Troy's fall reverberated through the halls of legend and lore, their tales woven into the fabric of civilizations that rose and fell in the wake of ancient empires. The fate of Helen, Menelaus, Agamemnon, and the other key figures of the Trojan War became entwined with the tapestry of human experience, a testament to the enduring power of myth and the timeless struggle between love and war, honor and betrayal, that has shaped the course of humanity since time immemorial. As the sun set upon the shores of the Aegean Sea, casting its golden light upon the ruins of Troy, the story of Helen, Menelaus, Agamemnon, and their companions faded into the mists of history. Yet their legacy lives on in the hearts and minds of all who hear their tales, a reminder of the triumphs and tragedies that define us as mortals, bound by the inexorable threads of fate that weave our lives together in ways both beautiful and tragic. In the wake of the Trojan War, a conflict that reverberated through the ages with its tales of heroism, tragedy, and divine intervention, its cultural and historical impact transcended the boundaries of time and place. Like ripples upon a vast ocean, the echoes of this epic struggle reached far beyond the shores of ancient Greece and Troy, shaping the course of literature, art, and human imagination for centuries to come. The tale of the Trojan War, with its cast of gods and mortals locked in a battle for honor, love, and vengeance, captured the hearts and minds of poets, playwrights, and artists throughout antiquity. It became a cornerstone of Greek mythology, immortalized in the epic poems of Homer, the Iliad, and the Odyssey. These works, recited by bards in grand amphitheaters and whispered by storytellers around hearth fires, painted a vivid tapestry of courage and despair, where gods walked among men and heroes grappled with their fates. Central to this cultural impact was the figure of Achilles, the swift-footed warrior whose wrath and grief became a focal point of Homer's narrative. His deeds on the battlefield, from slaying Hector to mourning Patroclus, resonated deeply with audiences, evoking a range of emotions from off to empathy. Achilles' complex character, torn between his quest for glory and the frailty of his mortal heart, symbolized the struggles and contradictions of human existence, an enduring theme that resonated across generations. The aftermath of the war, as portrayed in literature, delved into themes of loss, redemption, and the inexorable passage of time. The return of the Greek heroes to their homelands, fraught with trials and tribulations, provided fertile ground for storytellers to explore the depths of human resilience and the costs of ambition. Odysseus' arduous journey home, recounted in the Odyssey, became a testament to the enduring power of hope and the longing for reunion, a universal motif that transcended its ancient origins. Beyond literature, the artistic legacy of the Trojan War manifested in a myriad of forms, from pottery and sculpture to frescoes and mosaics. Greek artists depicted scenes from the war on vases and urns, capturing moments of valor and tragedy with exquisite detail. These artworks not only celebrated the heroic deeds of Achilles, Hector, and other warriors, but also served as visual narratives that connected viewers to the mythic past, reinforcing cultural identities and values. In the realm of architecture, the legend of Troy inspired the construction of grand temples and monuments dedicated to the gods who had influenced the course of the war. These sacred sites became focal points of religious devotion and communal identity, embodying the belief systems and rituals that sustained ancient Greek society. The enduring allure of the Trojan War extended beyond the realm of art and literature, influencing philosophical discourse and political thought. Greek philosophers and historians, such as Plato and Herodotus, reflected on the lessons of the war, its causes, consequences, and the nature of human conflict. Their writings explored themes of justice, ethics, and the role of divine intervention in human affairs, laying the groundwork for intellectual inquiry that would shape Western thought for millennia. In the centuries that followed, the legacy of the Trojan War continued to evolve, adapting to the cultural and historical contexts of successive civilizations. Roman poets, 
medieval chroniclers, and Renaissance artists reinterpreted the mythic narratives of Homer, weaving them into the tapestry of their own cultural traditions. Each retelling and reinterpretation added new layers of meaning and resonance, ensuring that the story of Troy remained a timeless testament to the triumphs and tragedies of the human experience. As we reflect on the cultural and historical impact of the Trojan War, we are reminded of its enduring relevance in an ever-changing world. It serves as a poignant reminder of the power of storytelling to transcend time and space, uniting generations in a shared exploration of what it means to be human. Through literature, art, and philosophical inquiry, the echoes of Troy continue to resonate, inviting us to ponder the complexities of fate, the fragility of heroism, and the enduring quest for meaning in our own lives. Imagine a tale that spans the realms of myth and history, weaving together gods and mortals, love and war, into a tapestry that has captivated humanity for millennia. The story of the Trojan War, both mythical and historical, transcends its origins in ancient Greece and Troy to become a reflection of the timeless themes that define the human experience. At its heart lies the clash of civilizations, the mighty city of Troy, fortified and proud, facing the relentless onslaught of the Greek armies led by Agamemnon, Menelaus, and the indomitable Achilles. This conflict, sparked by the abduction of Helen, the face that launched a thousand ships, unfolds against a backdrop of divine intervention and mortal passions. The gods themselves take sides, with Zeus, Hera, Athena, and Apollo influencing the fortunes of war, blurring the line between myth and reality. Yet, beneath the epic battles and heroic deeds lies a deeper exploration of human nature. The characters of the Trojan War, Achilles, Hector, Priam, and others embody the complexities of honor, duty, and fate. Achilles, driven by his quest for glory and consumed by grief, grapples with the limits of mortality. Hector, defender of Troy, struggles to reconcile his love for his family with his obligations as a warrior. And Helen, caught in the currents of fate, becomes a symbol of beauty and tragedy, her destiny intertwined with the destinies of nations. As we reflect on the mythical aspects of the Trojan War, we are drawn into a world where divine machinations shape mortal destinies. The wrath of Achilles, sparked by the death of Patroclus, unleashes a tide of sorrow and vengeance that reverberates across the battlefield. The gods, arbiters of justice and champions of their chosen heroes, intervene in mortal affairs with capriciousness and favor, reminding us of the enduring power of belief and the mysteries of the divine. But the Trojan War is more than a myth, it is also a historical event, grounded in archaeological evidence and ancient texts. The ruins of Troy, excavated by Heinrich Schliemann in the late 19th century, provided tangible proof of a once great city destroyed by fire and conflict. These discoveries sparked debates among scholars about the historicity of Homer's epics, raising questions about the blending of fact and fiction in the retelling of ancient stories. Yet, whether viewed through the lens of myth or history, the Trojan War continues to resonate with audiences today. Its themes of love and loss, heroism and betrayal, speak to universal truths about the human condition. We see ourselves reflected in the struggles of Achilles and Hector, in the tragic fate of Troy and its people. The war becomes a mirror through which we confront our own beliefs, values, and aspirations, inviting us to ponder the enduring legacy of ancient civilizations and the stories that define them. In literature and art, the Trojan War has inspired countless adaptations and interpretations, from the plays of Euripides to the paintings of Jacques Louis David. These works reimagine the epic conflict through the lenses of different cultures and epics, offering new perspectives on its timeless themes. Each retelling adds layers of meaning and emotion, enriching our understanding of the human experience and reminding us of the power of storytelling to transcend time and space. Ultimately, whether approached as myth or history, the Trojan War invites us to explore the boundaries between reality and imagination, between the mortal and the divine. It challenges us to grapple with the complexities of human existence and the enduring quest for meaning and purpose. As we reflect on its mythical and historical aspects, we are reminded of the profound impact of ancient stories on our modern understanding of ourselves and the world around us.